Uh, hello, and welcome to Casting Roles, a persistent D&D campaign played by a bunch of theater nerds. Thanks for joining us. Uh, before we begin, just a few brief announcements. If you're enjoying the campaign, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you think you know someone who might enjoy the show, please share on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Casting Roles and on Facebook at Casting Roles ILM and access all of our links, merch store, and other information at our website, castrolls.com. Episodes will stream here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Video uploads will be available on YouTube on Friday the same week. And with no other announcements, let's go ahead and start the show. Ticket Takers. After saving the town of Northwick from a band of thieving kobolds, you return to the town of Broadfield in to turn in the remaining elements required to establish the Adventurer's Guild as a full-fledged guild. Upon return, you found Roland, the mayor, sorrowfully drowning his frustrations in tankards of really good milk, as well as Tavik, the former leader of the now disbanded Slaughterers. Tavik informed you that the task of returning a kitten to its owner was just too much for the Slaughterers to handle, costing one of them their life and Soros hired Tavik to fulfill an errand for him. When you were finally alone with the mayor, Roland informed you of the real reasons behind the founding of the Adventurer's Guild. The town of Broadfield, dangerously in debt, made a deal with a shady fig figure named Soren Nerida. That deal is now coming back in the form of a threat from Soren that the town would burn if the funds were not repaid. After getting some help from a member of the Acumen, translating the letter left behind by Washbjord, who has had to leave the party due to, to deal with matters of a personal concern, Mar and Abel left to go meet with the Knoll the party had previously captured. Seeing the party broken, Soren used this moment to attack, unleashing a flurry of shadowy attacks before vanishing, and from the rift created by his disappearance, a familiar shadowy creature seen in the fight with the shadow-wreathed kobold sorcerer charged forth, dragging Abel and Mar into battle. So, I need the two of you to roll initiative. <laughs> I want to think it is, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 17? 17 for Abel, okay. And for Mar? Six. I have been so shook overseeing this man steal my entire identity before my eyes. <laughs> I'm thrown off my game. Oh my gosh. All right, so um, kind of kicking things off. So charging out of the rift, you kind of see this like shadowy um, essence like rip apart right in front of your eyes in like space, like almost like an envelope, like tearing open uh, right there. And out of this kind of murky shadowy depths, you see that form coming uh, a little bit bigger than the one that you ran into in, uh, in Northwick. And it's going to go ahead, Mar, and immediately make uh, two attacks against you. Uh, one oh, with its yeah. one with its kind of uh, elongating shadowy claws, and the other with kind of its uh, um, its its fist, which engorges with the the strength with the strike. So the first attack is a, not going to hit. That's a fourteen. No. Okay, and then the second attack with the uh, the larger punch is that will hit. That is a nineteen. All right, so you take um, six points of blood or necrotic damage, and you you feel this like this fist kind of slam into you, and there's a moment where it makes solid contact with your body, but then you almost feel as if it like passes into you for a second and then rips back out. And in addition to losing six hit points, your maximum hit points drop by six as well. Oh, yay. All right, so um, so that is the shadow's turn. Up next is Abel. You see um, this shadow charge out in front of Mar, and you're kind of standing behind her. So what are you up? What are you doing now? Well, Abel is quite shook. <laughs> shook. <laughs> Necrotic damage. Wasn't expecting that. Um, how close am I to? Uh, Mar and this creature, like if I so do an AP. Mar charged ahead, um, and so she's probably oh, 10 feet ahead of you, and then the shadowy creature is right on her. So, you know, you're probably 15 feet away or 10 feet away from the shadowy creature. Okay, I won't do that because then I'll also hit Mar. So, I mean, I, 
Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll, I'll save that as a secondary. I'm going to try to hit him with a firebolt as an action. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. Oh, that's not going to hit anything. It's a nine. What is with you and firebolt, man? Uh, yeah, so you um, you pull out your little your uh, spark device and you flash and it you kind of are shaken by the sudden attack and it, it pings off um, and flies off into the air above you. Um which takes a, are you going to move or do anything with your the rest of your action i'm going to stay right where i am and then i'm going to reach on my side and i'm going to pull out my little mechanical uh elephant okay. that that and i'm going to attach him to my gauntlet and awaken him and i'm going to hit him with a force ballista blast is that a bonus action yes that is a bonus action. is this an action to activate the the cannon Oh, it might be. So you might have you'll have to wait till the next round to activate it, but then you'll be able to fire it the next round too. Uh. But you have them there ready to go. I think that's right. It just says action type bonus action. Um, when you're first activating it. Uh. Honestly, it doesn't say. It just says action type bonus action, plus five to hit, force damage. At third level, you learn how to create a magical cannon using wood carving tools or smith tools. Um, oh, you can't take an action to magically create. There a you small. go. Okay, okay. so gonna... so you but you got the pieces ready to go, so you're you're good there. Um, all right, so then Mar, that takes us to you for your action here. Okay, I would like to. Pretty sure I didn't do this last time, so I will uh, go ahead and stab myself real quick, get some lightning on my sword. All right. Yeah, I'll take some max damage from that. Why don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Is that four? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's four for me. So. Um, okay, okay, okay. And then um, I will hit him with my rapier. Okay, go ahead and make your two strikes. Um, I only get one because I the oh right, right the bonus action. action you're good yeah yeah okay. yeah so I don't get a offhand on this yeah. uh, turn so that is a twenty two to hit that hits good um so go ahead and roll damage uh okay. you're killing me Alan. yeah this is <laughs> too. great uh seven points of damage seven okay and uh That's how much of my lightning how much of it was Which lightning. Is Okay. Uh, so seven points of regular damage, one point of lightning damage. Okay, so he takes seven points of damage. Uh, as you're as you strike across, you kind of sense that the 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 lightning tries to take a hold, but it doesn't hit as hard as you think it would. Um, all right, good. Rad. And that is kind of that. All right, so then the veil echo uh, kind of uh, he kind of rears back a little bit, um, but then you see him kind of he's he shifts. And goes around you so that now he's um, between you and Abel. Uh, and he's going to slap out at you with his claws. And then he's going to move the five feet to punch at Abel with the other uh, with the other attack. Um, so against you, Mar, that's not going to hit. The first roll never hits, um, which is good, I guess. But he's marking an attack of opportunity for him moving out of threat Yes, range. he's going to move out of your threat range so you can use your... Uh, your attack to hit him there more uh i don't think it's gonna hit him at 12 uh, it or misses. 14 14 oh, sorry it Would that hit? just misses so you are you <laughs> swing out and it's almost like the the shadowy essence kind of forms around the blade as it goes by and it just doesn't make contact and then against cool. you abel um a 17 to hit that hits all right so then you take <clears throat> six points of necrotic damage and your max HP also drops by six points. Nice. And that will take <laughs> us to Abel, your turn up. Okay. Uh, so technically, since I used my first action to do the uh, the firebolt, would it be the action now to create the A cannon? Action now to create the cannon, and then and a bonus, bonus action, action to fire. To fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm still learning, you guys. That's all right. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try to hit him with a... Ballista. Okay, you are within his his range, and this is a range attack. Is that does it list? It's listed as a range attack. Is that correct? I think it's like a, up to one hundred and twenty feet. So yeah. yeah. So it would be at disadvantage unless you wanted to move back. Uh, but if you moved out of his range, he would get an opportunity. He would get an opportunity attack. Yeah. Yes, he ain't about that life, man. 
Uh, okay. No, I'll try to hit him with my quarter staff, two handed. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll for attack. Is that an action or a bonus action? I don't know. Oh no, that is an action. That's true. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll just try to hit him with the list. All right. So roll twice uh, and uh, take the lower of the two rolls. So I don't think I have any other bonus action scales. Um, okay. Oh, I mean, that was a 19. Let's pray. Okay. Uh, 10 plus 5 or 15. Maybe? That just hits. So go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Force, force ballista is the way to go, man. Yeah. I don't know uh, why you mess with fire bolts. I don't know, man. I, I have hope for it. Uh, it's just six points of damage. Six points of damage. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so you kind of uh, the little elephant gathers the light around you, and then the 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 snout lifts up and blasts through, and it, it kind of pierces through the shadowy essence, uh, and then kind of pops out the other side, and then the shadow reforms around where the the energy blasted through. Um, very nice, Mar. That takes us to you, which you can now get flanking if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Would like to do that. Um, hit up with my rapier. Um, 21 to hit. That will that hit. Rapier. Yep. Okay, so that's this. Ooh, two ones. Um, <laughs> so that is, uh, uh, what is that? Six points of damage. Okay. Yeah. And at, one of that is lightning damage. So the lightning doesn't. What that is is not good. <laughs> yeah. The light. The lightning doesn't no. it, it take hold again. So uh, and then go ahead and make your uh, your sh your uh, short sword attack. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Eleven's not gonna hit him. No, so. it's not. <laughs> All right. Cool. So um, so you make a, a, a relatively solid connection with the rapier, and then when you go to swing with the short sword, it just passes right through and, and makes doesn't connect with his shadowy form at all uh which takes us back up to him uh he's going he rakes out at you uh abel mm -hmm. the first roll will never hit i've rolled a three a four and a two so that's not going to hit uh but then he he punches out uh at you mar um with a 12 plus four a 16 uh, just hits. Just yep. hits. All right. So then that is um, six, uh, no, seven points of necrotic damage, and your max HP then drops again by another seven. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. And then that is, um, it, it, it kind of shifts again, and it moves around you, Mar, and now puts you between him and Abel. Um, so he's kind of shifting and, and focusing. Abel, you do get an uh, attack of opportunity with your quarter staff if you'd like to take it. Yes, I will. Let me see. Oh, man. No, it's a five to hit. Nope. Uh, so you, you go to swing, and again, like it, he just kind of moves out. My own uh, good. And then that does take us to Abel for your turn. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can... Uh, how close is he? Is he within? He so Mar is like ten feet away from you, and he's now back on the other side of Mar. So Mar is okay. between you and him, or it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to use my. Can I get? I really want to use this spell, but I don't want to hurt Mar. So I'm going to try Firebolt again. You're not <laughs> going gonna... to. You, you're not going to shoot him with a Force Ballista. Well, that's a bonus action. So oh, okay. Gonna... Oh, right, right. Because you can do both now. That's true. Yeah. All right. So uh, go ahead yeah. and roll for your Firebolt. This is going to work. This is it is a natural one. <laughs> I don't know if you've made contact with a Firebolt in eight sessions of this game. So. I don't think I have. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna so trade that out. <laughs> you go to fire, and Mars kind of dodging around like you know his tendrils, and you see that Mars about to get hit, and you choose to shoot. Uh, you you throw away your shot, um, and then 
you can now try to aim with your force ballista if you'd like. Old tried and true. Yeah, let me go to the force ballista. Um, force ballista. Oh no, it is a fifteen to hit. Fifteen just hits. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought yeah, fifteen. Fifteen is the AC. Yeah. Okay, and nine points of damage. All right. It's starting to look um, like it's struggling to maintain its shape and form a little bit. Okay. And I guess I'll just... I'll back up a little bit. I'll All take a couple steps back. Okay, so you move 10, 5, 10 feet back. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, Mar, it's now kind of up in your face again. All right. I'm going to try to hit it. Uh, 21. D d definitely hits. Okay. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 13 damage. Oh, nice. Um, Finally. All right. Uh, two points of that was lightning. Okay, so uh, so 12 points of damage because uh, it's resistant to lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I figured. Um, all right, and uh, then you make your short sword attack. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's all right. All right, and then so, um, but like with that, that first hit, um, that kind of almost like that skittering, almost like uh, elements of it are being like sucked backwards and just vanishing and disappearing. It's struggling mm -hmm. to maintain its form, but you see it kind of fo it focus, and in that moment, it makes its two strikes out against you. One with its elongating claws, mm -hmm. which will hit. That is a eighteen to hit. It's gonna hit. Um, and so with this one, you take uh, eight points of piercing damage. Uh, and then go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw. Um, where is my constitution? Um, that is a 15. 15, okay. So you feel for a moment almost like this uh, necrotic toxin start to kind of seep into where the wound carved through, but you uh, pull yourself together and you're able to kind of shunt the, the poison and you see little tendrils of shadow just disappear out of the wound and then effervesce into nothing in front of you. Um, and then it go it's going to take its second attack at you with its giant fist. So I'll just do math really quick. Uh, that's not gonna hit. That was a two. Um, so it swings out with uh, its its club fist, and you are able to uh, kind of dodge out of the way, and it, it kind of whiffs past you. Uh, good, uh, Abel. <laughs> I'm going to. I really don't want to use thunder wave, even though it's like one of my most badass spells. <clears throat> <laughs> just throw more up against the wall. She'll be fine. She's, yeah, she'll, she'll, she's taking the most damage she'll here. She'll totally so. be fine. Yeah. You don't know how much HP I have. I could be fine. <laughs> you probably will be, but I'm gonna I'm gonna firebolt and firebolt's gonna hit this time. Okay? <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Isn't you catapult be... stronger than firebolt? Uh, do I have catapult? I do have catapult. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, then never mind. I'll do catapult then. I'll find some, like, debris or something, and I'll pull out my little metallic disc. Yeah, there's some there's some kind of uh, heavy items in the alleyway there. Yeah, maybe like a sack of flour or something sitting out there. Yes, bean him with a, t a sack of flour. Go ahead and roll uh, your right. attack on that. So I'll just, yeah, pull out my little metallic disc, and I'll just throw it right underneath the sack of flour, and I'll cast my catapult. And as soon as... My D&D &D is um, acting up. Hold on. Come on, buddy. Don't do this to me. Oh, it's a, he has to roll a deck save. I'm oh, sorry. it's a deck save? Okay. Um, I just dropped my D20. Uh, a 12. No, it's a dex 13. Oh, okay. So go ahead and roll the damage on that. So <laughs> you flick your little uh, object over and you activate the arcane word. And this, uh, you know, large five pound sack of flour suddenly flies through the air and magically beans into this shadow creature. Um, go ahead and how much damage was that? Yeah. That is uh, 15 points of 
15 damage. points of damage. Okay, um, so that is okay. So he's like, you see the 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 sack connect to his body, and it explodes, and there's just this powdery cloud of uh, flour kind of mixing with the. Uh, you know, with his shadowy form, and he's, it's almost like, uh, kind of blinking in and out of existence, he's just hanging on, it seems, by a thread, um, so, Ooh, great, have a nice bonus action. okay, go ahead and, uh, use your bonus <laughs> yeah. action there. Yeah, all right um, there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see okay, if it sorry. gets to my turn. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a 14 to hit, doesn't hit, doesn't it? 14 doesn't hit. So you go to fire your, your ballista, and the cloud of flower uh, kind of obscures your vision a little bit, and um, you you it fires wide, and you don't make contact. All right, which okay. takes us to Mar. It's up to you, Mar. It's up to you. <laughs> How visible are we in this alley? Uh, you are not... So right now you are actually, I probably actually should have had Abel roll with disadvantage on that second attack. You're probably obscured. I mean, five pounds of flour um, <laughs> are around you. you. You guys are probably okay. 15 feet into the alleyway and it wasn't okay. a very busy day. So you're, you're probably okay. Can, can I see Abel right now? Uh, like no. do Abel and I have a line of sight on each other? He cannot okay. see you. Yeah. Okay. We'll go with his uh, role was bad enough that it's clear that his vision is obscured, so he can't see you well enough. Okay. Uh, I would like to dip into my subclass real quick. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, you activate that energy and that power, and you feel your form, yep. and then you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Uh... I, you know what? Fuck it. I dropped the rapier for a second and just unarmed strike this guy. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Cool. Make your first strike. Yep. Um, 19 to hit. It hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, okay. So the... Doesn't it crit on 19? It was plus the 19. Like oh, okay, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, 8 points of damage. Okay, and then you rip at him with your second attack. Go ahead and, um, roll that one, too. Yeah, I'll do, um, another Jeez. unarmed strike with the claws. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh... Uh, so that's a, yeah, that hits him because okay. I rolled a 15. So yeah, then... yeah, 15 AC, yep. Um, 12 points of damage. All right, describe how you off this shadow. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I'm mad and bleeding out profusely, um, and I use that power to change my hand into the claw for just a second and just fucking nail this guy okay yeah uh, and then i immediately pull it back all right so you so you burns. make your first attack and you feel like half of the shadow form kind of shifts one way and then you strike back with the other one and you, it's almost like you sever the shadow in two and you see it just kind of whoosh, and fade into nothing and as this cloud of flower uh kicked up by abel's uh, catapult starts to fade you kind of retract and pull yourself together um definitely injured but seeing the power of what you're able to, to accomplish and then abel you see as the um as the flower clears mars standing there and there's no the shadow creature is gone okay so i'll say you defeated him very good yeah um do i know <laughs> uh, okay i'm gonna sit down <laughs> i sit down <laughs> So she's dropped her weapons. Would I notice that? Like I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, on the ground. you see her standing there. She, she she normally carries a rapier and a short sword, and both I of them are them. on the yeah. ground. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ask her. Um, did he injure you? Did you drop your weapon when you went? Uh, yeah. I mean, look at me. She's covered it's in blood. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll walk over and I'll cast the cure wounds on her. Okay. So I think I took like one or six points of damage, and she's a little bit full of blood. Are you doing first level or second level? One could have say if that he had hit me one more time, I had been, I would have gone down. <laughs> and you wanted me to do a thunder wave. <laughs> I'm expecting fate. I just wanted to see if you would. <laughs> uh, would have been. Funny. It wouldn't have killed her. It just would have knocked her out. It would have been funny. Well, I don't even think I have go big or go home. Yet. 
You, I don't oh, you don't have second level spells yet. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Go no. ahead and um, so first yeah. cure wounds, um, and then yeah, so I lay my hands on her, and then my little metallic spider will come off my gauntlet and crawl across her and leave its little shiny green webs and clear her for nine points of damage. Okay. So you're getting nine. Uh, uh, and you lost twelve from its one attack. Is that right, Mar? I. Uh, it was six, I think, wasn't it? Because I've got six points of damage, and then my max HP was reduced by that amount. Well, I just because uh, that 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 nine points won't get you up to your now reduced HP. Is that right? No, it doesn't okay. get me to my reduced HP. My reduced HP is now nineteen, I believe, if I did my math right. Because he reduced me twice. Yes, that's. I think that's right. Yep. All right. So, uh, for a moment, we kind of will fade, and sitting in the uh, the the Golden Ass Tavern. Um, Kaimana and Soros, you guys are sitting there, uh, near the like, you have no idea what's going on outside or, or hearing any commotion or anything. Um, so what are you two doing in the, the tavern? Uh, a word with you, brother. Yes. Um, when we go back to where the kobolds were to intercept the messenger, yes. you need to be concerned and make sure that they don't take you if things go wrong. The figure on the art is known as the bishop, and he made me, and he will do unspeakable things to you. I don't like the sound of that. No, it's not a good thing. Just be careful. I might not be careful. Good. More milk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. Oh, boy. It's too much. It's too cute. I'm trying to fix some things. Hold on one second. And by the way, a cloud of flour will, a bag of flour will make that much stuff in the air. Uh, I was grew up living on sailboats with my mom during the summers, and um, one summer, the two-pound bag of flour in the container got loose when we were in some heavy waves. Um, heard a crash down below, and so my mom sends my brother and I down to find out what happened. We eventually get into a flower fight with each other. <laughs> no. and she hears mayhem happening, comes to kill us, and she can't see us through the fog of war. <laughs> oh, God. Come up, we look like ghosts. Oh. Um, also, flower can be flammable. So I, that's, uh, I was actually flammable. really worried that she was going to use their lightning attack. Because I was like, uh, what would the lightning do to the flower? Knew, and that's why I dropped the ring <laughs> but, but, And also but, yeah. for a cool moment. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no. For, Fireball yeah, but doesn't hit anything for... It would have hit the cloud of flour. That's one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, it would have missed. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Cloud the of flour sees is fireworks impressive. and is like, what? Uh, all right. So, um, anything else from Soros and Kaimana as you guys are there? Mm, probably not. Okay. Um, and then so uh, Mar and Abel, um, you you guys are there, kind of gathering yourself in the alleyway. Uh, your original intention was to head off towards the knoll. Um, I don't know if you want to continue on that mission or, or head somewhere else. Well, I believe we should go back and give Sordis and, and Kaimada. Let them know what happened to us. Yeah. I can do pretty good interrogation, though, right now. I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in blood. We'll head there. We will head there next, but I believe it is safer for us to all stay together. I agree. Uh... Do, just looking around, I don't know, I'm just um, throwing stuff out. Does anything, like, did our guy, when he, like, poofed away, leave anything behind? Any evidence or any um, interesting tidbit? Just a quick little glance. All right, uh, go ahead and roll just a perception check to kind of see if there's anything out of place in your surroundings. Mm. 
16 plus 2 and 18. Um, so you're kind of looking around, and <clears throat> there you don't see him uh, anywhere. Uh, and kind of glancing across the ground, uh, there's very clearly his footprints running to where they were with Mar, uh, and then just disappearing. Um, but other than that, there's nothing left behind, or there's no evidence of his being there. Okay, so I'll help Mar up if she wants me to. You know, not... I'll help. I'll get the help. Okay, and we'll walk back towards the um, the rest of the group. Okay, so you guys make your way back to the the Golden Ass Tavern, and uh, you open the doors and walk in. And Roland still hasn't returned yet, um, so you are just looking at uh, Soros and Kaimana is kind of sitting there, where you left them, uh, having their conversation. And so uh, Soros and Kaimana, you, you guys look up to see Mar and Abel walking in, and Mar is covered in blood uh, and has some pretty bad gashes on her arm. What happened to you? Yours um, or someone else's? Ah, uh, it's mostly mine. No, uh, I can't really lie well, about she that gave one. Well, she gave as good as she got, I will say that. Kind of. Yeah, the thing we were fighting, I don't really think had blood. So that's cool. Is it still walking? No. It is dissolved. It is long gone. I believe we were attacked by the sword of Merida. Merida? Merida. Merida. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently he has plans to return at some point. Yeah, he uh, definitely is on to us. Yes, I think it's best for us to stay together. I think he took us separating as an opportunity. That's a good plan. Yes. Uh, if we, f if you all are finished up here, I think we should go over to the investigation of the cobalt. Of the knoll, I'm sorry, of the knoll. Uh, but we shook away as a group. Yes. So okay. off we go. You are ready. All right. Hit that. <clears throat> so, um, Abel, you've been to the, the Watchman's outpost before, mm -hmm. so you kind of lead the way, and the, the group follows you as you make your way through town. Uh, Mar, you get a few looks from um, people passing by on their business <laughs> uh, at the, the blood-soaked exterior. Um, but they, they keep on moving and, uh, eventually you, you come into the, the law, the law master's office. Uh, yeah. When, when they, they look at more like that, I just look at them and go, ticket takers. Ticket <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you, are you trying to, um, be, make them intimidated of the group or kind of be persuaded about nope. how awesome the group is? Nope, just state the fact. All right, just state the fact. All right, so like this is what they you can, expect. They yep. can draw their own conclusions, whatever they may be. I'm not All right. trying to persuade or intimidate. Good. Should that happen, won't be upset. <laughs> nope. Uh, you just they're planting the idea in your their head, and they they kind of give you a look and move on. The name is well known in town, so um, and you guys are recognizable at this point by the community. Um, so you you kind of get there and and the, the, you open the door and the law masters there. Um, a man who seems to always be eating a ham sandwich, uh, yeah. again, uh, mustard in his beard, uh, he just kind of, he's like, hey, it's good to see y'all again. Um, it, I will ask, um, do you have a healing kit or can you send for a healer? My friend was injured. Um, well. fine. I'll be fine. Uh, I'm right here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. I am sorry. Uh, <laughs> perhaps Kamana, you can look after her and see if she can yes. switch you. up a bit while we talk I to her. I will me. do uh, my um. job. <laughs> 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 I just gotta get used to it. I just gotta get used to it. That's it. I just gotta. Uh, <laughs> the the lawmaster does go. I mean, well, he can handle it. Uh, he says, but if you if you need those kind of services, the uh, the the way of the white is at the the temple um in town so you, you can always get help from them they do require a donation but yeah uh, we appreciate it I, yeah. I believe my friend is more than capable okay. of handling this what do you, what do you uh, need mark uh i mean truly i am i'm at half so i'm like cool it's just that my max is like only three points above my half right now so i'm not <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's a long rest problem 
Yeah, I, it's, I'm no, no, okay. No. I'm just exhausted and bloodied and yeah. mentally over this. No. <laughs> I might as well, like, patch you and, like, help you clean up a little bit. At least. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Kamana starts patting you down, cleaning no. you up a little bit. I get, like, little Elmo band-aids on all my, like, <laughs> scars. Oh. Love it. And little little otter kisses. Just little otter kisses. <laughs> No, stop it. <laughs> no, stop. Uh, yeah, so then the law master says, uh, so are, are you back to, to talk to the prisoner, or there's something else I can do for you? Uh, yes, we were supposed to meet Mr. Herman from the monastery. Herman, and uh, when the you kind of look around the room, like inside of the cell with the knoll, uh, you see Herman, the darker-skinned man with the, the dreadlocks, um, and he and the knoll are kind of, like back and forth to each other uh, they're having a, a conversation in uh, nullish apparently okay so i guess i'll signal to the rest of the group we'll walk over we'll ask mr herman what has he said so far oh and then herman kind of glanced up and says oh i i, I didn't see it there i was kind of lost in this conversation he's a pretty interesting fella um so uh well i i think it'd be better for you to talk to him and and rather than me that seems kind of rude i think um so whatever you want to know um his name's split ear uh you, you can ask him anything you'd like to know split ear. does he have a split ear he does he uh his right ear is kind of cut in half from the the tip uh and there's a, like a hunk missing and then it's it's kind of cut in half and the, the, the top part kind of flops a little bit from the where it's been torn free of its tendon or whatever. Kaimana's gonna look up at Mar and be like, his name suits him. <laughs> it does. Mars does too right now, because she's <laughs> Mars, but um, I, oh, uh, I need to talk to this yep. for a reason. Uh, I was a pun the whole time, you fool. <laughs> 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 That's in Mar. poor taste. Mar, if you were a null, you would yeah. be named Angry Lady. <laughs> 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 I ask Herman what I ask Herman what angry lady is in Null. Uh, Herman kind of sits for a second and. Uh, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> I look over at the Null and repeat it as best as I can while pointing at Mar. The the Null kind of <laughs> looks at you and then looks at Mar and you get the sense that he kind of got it in translation and then uh, Herman turns to him and kind of, you know, mumbles a few things in Nolish and, and then split ear kind of, uh, and, and kind of leans back. Uh, he's already had encounters with Mar. So he, 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 I winked at him. Yeah. We're familiar. He likes We are familiar. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Abel will lean in towards the knoll and ask, why were you ambushing people on your road to the King Towns? Um, okay, so I'll just talk as Splitier, but knowing that this is going through um, from through Herman. No, Josh, you have to do the Nolan <laughs> and then yeah. translate and then back to Nolan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's oh man, weird. I get to I, I get to use my <laughs> Nolish dictionary now. Let's see. Okay, uh, if only I could get Sully to come in here, she would talk for me. It'd be fun. Um, oh. All right, so um, so you ask in, uh, and Splitier says, uh, I'm. Well, we lost Atwood for a moment, so hold on a second. I can't, I can't deal with um, puppet. <laughs> like every time I look it's, at the, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Every time I look it at the screen. Beautiful. Yep. When 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 Kamada was reading the player's handbook, that's that's what I'm like. Yeah, that know. was the breaking point, truly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Kamada's back. Um, so split ear, um, kind of takes a moment and then he he explains he said um i am from the deep wood my pack lived there in harmony with the wood for generations but recently the spiders and the spider queen had moved in from deeper in um, and started to threaten our lands and so we left um, but we did not have enough food for the journey to the Veltland. The Veltland? Yeah, the, so the Veltland, um, which Herman translates as Veltland. Uh, that's not what Split Ear says, but Herman knows enough to know. Um, the Veltland is 
the farming region of Illyria. It's between, there's two major mountain chains. Um, there's the, the Sunset Ridge and the, the Sunrise Mountains. And then there's uh, another set of mountains further to the north. And between them is this verdant valley known as the Veltland, which is the, where most of the farming and the farmland is. Um, and so he, he and his family were leaving the Deepwood and were heading to the Veltland. Okay. Which uh, is very welcoming of packs of marauding gnolls. Herman translate and uh, he's uh, splitter says my family is we have a um, a peaceful community there. Uh, we are farmers and herdsmen. I have never known gnolls to be farmers and herdsmen. Perhaps where you come from. That is fair. I am in a strange land. Uh, what would have caused the Spider Queen and her people to move from deep within the deep woods closer to your territories? I believe that it may have been my pack leader's fault. He found a cave of riches, <coughs> and when he explored it, he vanished from this world. When we went to find him, we too found ourselves somewhere other than here. Perhaps in a dream. We found his dead body uh, trapped in webs. He had fed the Spider Queen with his own corpse. How, do, how long ago was this? Hmm. Uh, about two moons. <clears throat> Would your people have moved on by now? Uh, there were, in our escape from the deep woods, several died. There were only, um, aside from the three that you encountered on the road, there was only um, a few women, children, and the old remaining. I believe they would have moved on and not waited for my return. Mm. Any, anything else you all can think of that we should inquire about? Maybe if he knows where the cave is? Yes, the cave, the location of the cave. Mm. It is near the large oak for <laughs> one day's march from the hold on the sunrise side of the forest. Large oak. I look at more. Why do you keep saying click with me? Uh, uh, well, sunrise side, you would uh, immediately know like the eastern side of the forest, which is mm -hmm. the closest side. Uh, that part of the forest actually disappears into the veil. Um, and okay. so the, the wardens are really concerned about that side because a lot of creepy stuff comes out of the veil sometimes sure um but large oak uh and the hold the only thing that you've heard you i mean the hold is the center of the forest um so you kind of get a sense of somewhere from the center of the forest a certain day's number of march from there there's a large oak tree wow a large oak tree in a forest it means something <laughs> to the null. <laughs> if I if I bring out the map that we that we bought and I present it to the null, could he give us sort of a general area of where this cave may be located on the map? Unfortunately, you pull out the map again, and it had cities, roads, and rivers. It did not include any part of the wood in the map. Ah, so this is not helpful to us. Okay. He's giving southern directions. It's a ways past yonder. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, Daddy made yellow brick house. Right. Yeah. You'll <laughs> find it. <laughs> yeah. The the reference to a cave though, Mar, and waking, uh, finding mm -hmm. yourself in a dream that that all sounds very familiar. Yeah, for sure. To who? <laughs> to me. To Mar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A lot of, a lot of explaining to do. 
Um, that was something I actually told you guys about, but okay. It was, yeah. Um, and then, so there's a moment where you're kind of, you guys are communicating, and then um, Split Ear starts talking again, and then Herman begins, continues translating, and he says, It was not my idea to raid the shipments, uh, it was another. Uh, and I did not know that it would turn to murder. And I am sorry for any loss of life. We were concerned about our pups. They were starving. Inside check 22. Yeah. Excuse okay. me, 21. He's, uh, the translation makes it hard to know, but you, you get a sense of sincerity in his, in his eyes. Um, there, he, he, there's none of the aggression that was there when you fought him. Uh, he just, he seems very much that he is being honest in what he's saying. Can I make an insight check to the uh, translator? <laughs> sure. Yeah, go ahead. Like, mm. he's, he's saying stuff. Just trying to figure out how to use D&D &D Beyond. <laughs> D&D &D. Beyond. Beyond. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, that is a 19. 19. Um, you get the sense watching Herman that while he can understand and speak Nolish, it's probably not something that he gets a lot of practice in. So he's incredibly focused on what uh, is being said and then it's taking him a moment to translate. Uh, he, it, you he, you get the sense he's doing the best that he can in his translation. Okay, he's not making any stuff up. No. The true translator will take care not to translate word for word. Cicero. <laughs> mm. Which I r ran across when I was taking Latin and went, You see? <laughs> <laughs> did not get me the bonus points I was looking no. for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what would you have us do with you? <clears throat> Very good question. I know that what happened was wrong and that many in your world would be upset and angry with what occurred. I accept whatever punishment you decide. I would ask if you travel to the Veltman to check in on my tribe and see if they are safe. I have a young... A younger brother. What's his name? His name is Stub Nose. They're very literal. <laughs> Stub Nose. You're going to make me feel bad for this guy. What was that, Kamana? Should be easy to find. <laughs> Should be easy to find. Oh, Lord. He's he color much the same as me, but he has a white splotch across his face. You would think they would have called him white splotch then. My parents. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um I ask what the rules about temporary indenture are you ask the lawmaster or yes uh so the law well uh, the 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 curia regis outlawed the death penalty years ago um so indentured servitude tends to be the the main form of punishment uh for murder especially the murder of three people uh, I would imagine that he would probably get 10 or 15 years uh, in the mines. Would that we be don't know that he murdered all nope. three. That's true. What I, would, what I would suggest, rather than putting him into the mines, is putting him to work in the fields of the people that were killed so that the families that he can help their families so that they don't suffer through the, the, the winter from not having been able to bring their crops in. That way he's making double restitution 
both by serving his time as well as benefiting those who he has harmed. Yes. I think that that's probably a f fair punishment as long as, you know, it's carried forth with the same. Um, the, my only concern might be the families might not want a constant reminder of what they've lost around. In that case, what I would say is perhaps use your skills to negotiate. Perhaps put him working for another family and moving that worker over to help the aggrieved. Uh, I think that that's probably something we could... Uh, I don't think that's a bad idea. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to... As the lawmaster, I get to make the ultimate decision, but I'll reach out to the families. I know that Roland was already getting contact with them. I think he said that you all wanted to talk to him. Um, so we can reach out to them and see what they would prefer. Do you others think that that is a good idea? I believe that is the perfect solution to what is happening here. Uh, okay, well, I think we have a lot to discuss to see what our next move would be. If the Spider Queen uh, deserves our attention, we need to do some planning, right? Anything now, else one can think of? Uh, not for Snibia, but this is my first time hearing of Spider Queen. Yes. Um, I can ask him about the Spider Queen if you want some more information. Maybe he yeah. saw it. Uh, so yes. Herman translates and for, and for a moment, Split Ear, uh, there are large spiders throughout the deep wood. We hunt them for food. Uh, this was different. Uh, it was much larger than um, even the brood mothers, uh, and it was infected with um, plants. There were vines and flowers sprouting from its body. And when its eggs hatched, there were spores that came from them and um, infected the surrounding plant life and animal life as well. I want us to like a bunch of spider webs when we went to the dam? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the spiders have been there, but they've probably been affected by the veil. Like the there, rest was of the also, there was also the, the spores that we saw. Oh, yeah. That would be the third creature that I would have come across at this point. <sighs> Interesting. Well, I don't think we can solve this right now. Perhaps we should journey back to the inn to plan out how we're doing with this other, dealing with this other issue. Yeah. That we must add to our list. And as you guys are <clears throat> getting ready to leave, Herman just says, "I'm I'm gonna stay and talk to him for a while." But you remember, oh, wait, before we go, yeah, um, I, I'll ask the note. Can you tell us more about your journey into the cave and the the dream world that you were in? Oh. Uh, it was um, a large cave uh, filled with uh, gemstones and uh, ore. Uh, but when we walked in, we could tell that something changed. Uh, the, the air got sweeter um, and heavier, and the colors changed. And when we came out the other side, we could tell that we were no longer in the deep wood, but in some wilder and more alive forest. Sounds like the Fey Room? Me casually flipping to my session zero notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't I, think that yeah. I'm not doing a perception check on you, Grace. I, 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 I went to the Fey Wild. She said I know that. No, I'm seeing Rob watching Grace. Yeah. <laughs> your facial expressions as this is going on. 
Not Soros watching more, but Rob watching Grace. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to see if I remember. <laughs> if I remember. I don't know if I do. Yeah, he's, he says, um, we have heard of these uh, as um, gateways into the dream of Derevo. Which, from the conversations you had with Mar and everything else, you know, is now the Feywild. Sage and Woods is probably a gateway to the Feywild. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. <coughs> I don't like having to face loss, though. Ah, uh, yes, I am uh, apparently not very popular in the uh, in the deep woods. No. <laughs> Tiernan's definitely Shoot. waiting for you to come back. <laughs> Shooting off flame in the air before. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I prefer the force um, first. <laughs> I have kind of somewhere we could go, maybe. I'd have to ask permission before bringing you all home, so. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the crazed dragon would not be an issue. I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I hope not, but I don't. Ah, he hasn't messed with us yet, so that seems promising. It may be something we have to risk. I mean, if if, if nothing else, we don't have to sleep out in the open in the forest. So. That's true. But if whatever's happening in the in the deep woods is causing gnolls to attack travelers on the road, then it's something we need to look into. I'd definitely like to look into it at some point. Ah, uh, okay. And, maybe we'll uh, anybody would like to roll a history check, you can roll a history check. As oh, well. yeah, I was going to ask that. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, well, this it's, actually, you would. Probably. It's history. I'm two years old in this world. <laughs> I'm two years old. And I rolled a two year old gun. <laughs> Really so, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> for your for your history, um, Soros, you you remember that this is now the second group of natives of the Deepwood that you have heard escaping from or leaving the Deepwood for one reason or another. It um, in your brain, you're like, this is like the epicenter of a lot of issues that are plaguing this part of the world. Because uh, the kobolds had also left the Deepwood because they had been infected by this bloodlust from this new god, and they'd left the Deepwood as well. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So I rolled a 12. I'm sure it's not going to get me too much of anything. It, well, you remember... Uh, you you actually didn't talk to Tog, so you wouldn't have remembered that, but that was something that Togs had told Soros. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do I know that now? Is that something that Soros relates to the group? Not yet. <laughs> no, okay. it's not. I'm waiting for a third. Once, coincidence. Two, could be anything. Three, we have a pattern. I would say a dragon walking around and saying, hey, I'm going to kill all the humans. This is, this is maybe a third, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> that's a dragon being a dragon. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> and the humans were cutting down trees. That's, 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 that's humans being humans. Mm -hmm. Exploiting resources. Not that that ever happens in the real world. Never. Never, yeah, never. A real beast. Uh, yeah. As you guys... Are you, are you now finished with um, Herman and the, the Knoll? Yes. I okay. think Herman is, is, is help. Oh, anytime. Um, and remember, you're more than welcome to visit the library or the monastery. Um, at we did open it. Invitation. We're going to the library. <laughs> <laughs> he is a member of the Acumen. He has to do this. You bring up the library so he much. He has to do the speech every time. He commissioned for it. Oh, if we go... Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, all about ritual it's like doing tai chi yeah you've got to you've got to go through all the forms yep all of them all right so you guys <laughs> head out uh from the um from the lawmaster's office and you're heading back to the inn or the tavern 
Yeah, back yes. to the big ass inn. The big ass. So you get to the gilded ass, and uh, when you open the door, um, Roland is inside, and he seems a little more chipper. He's up about kind of cleaning up and, and putting things away and wiping tables down and, and things. Um, oh, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, and we lost Kaimana for a moment. I feel like the, the real drain on the Wi-Fi now is the puppet. Yeah. <laughs> Puppet gotta get to Kaimata a tail. The puppet, needs, the puppet needs to turn its phone Wi-Fi off. No. It should Is never that have gotten that puppet a phone. No. Now the puppet's gone. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm so worried. Uh, all right, so Roland's there, and he says, "Ah, oh, it's uh, welcome back, welcome back. Um, I I had to go check on the wife. Is everything um." Everything going well? Um, yep. Yep. Good. I stare him down <laughs> in my bloody garments. Roll an intimidation check. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Intimidation? I think, yeah. I think Marsh should get advantage on this. With advantage. You TV. are covered with... Yeah, um, very yeah. 17. Yeah, you so. didn't even need the advantage. Um, he kind of sees you and... Uh, well, um, I, mm, I'm going to go check the office and he goes through a door behind the bar and closes it behind him do we uh, hear it lock uh no <laughs> it doesn't have a lock <laughs> um if anybody kaimana you would pick up with it with your natural perception when he opened the door it was not an office it is a storage closet oh. <laughs> <laughs> Paul calls somebody to go in the closet no oh, no no <laughs> I mean, oh. I mean Kaimana wouldn't really know the any different. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a room that's filled with uh, stuff. Yeah, brooms and whatnot. Yeah. Um. So I'll say, do you think we got all the information from Roland that he really knows about the man who attacked us? Yeah. I don't think he's gonna be much more help. Yes, I was hoping he maybe he would be, but. I don't think, I think that's he, what... I think he's told us all that he noticed. Yeah. I mean, we must be prepared uh, according to him. He does plan to come back, so... Well, we gotta be ready. Yes, we will be ready. Now, what do you think our next move should be? We have a spider queen, a displacer beast, uh... Sorden is returning to Brockfield to set it ablaze. I feel like maybe that's the priority. <laughs> I'm I just going to put to... that on the table. Yeah. Uh... Sorden first. We need to go to the library. Um, yes. We have the... What are, what are we going to the library for? Just to do research on the area. Um, is that where the... the um, the celebration of Medicansi. Uh, yeah, the Day of Ascension, uh, the, the celebration for the Day of Ascension takes place at the monastery, and that's in two days. Or oh. three days. Yeah. Also, to learn more about uh, this Araman, so that when we confront the mm -hmm. the messenger, we hopefully will be better armed. And then we go into the forest. Never to return. <laughs> And it's so cool. I'm so excited for that festival. Ah, Ma, Ma, I believe you will have a, a great time. Medicine. I won't. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> there may be tickets to be taken. Well, <laughs> that is promising. <laughs> now I'm in. <laughs> festival of the Awakening? The Day of Ascension. Okay, I'm just you just made that completely. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in 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 the land where Abel is from, that's the local term. Yeah, for it's right. the, the festival they of awakening. Lost in translation. Yeah. 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 Agreed, so that yeah. is the Nuevan. Yeah. At monastery. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So should we rest up because um, the meeting will be tomorrow with Soren and the gang? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Patch you up, Marlo. Uh, yeah. From the closet, you hear, you hear, um, I, I got help. Um, I, I forgot to mention I got some help. Can I come out now? <laughs> yeah, no one told you to go in there. Uh, right. Of course. So he opens the door. He comes out. He says, um, I spoke to the lawmaster about your plans to have a uh, tete-a-tete uh, with Soren. Um, and the lawmaster says that he will, he has three officers who, um, that he will have posted on the roof uh, to kind of overwatch the situation. Um, so I got help. Will they be armed with crossbows? I, I hope so. That makes sense, doesn't it? It does. Perhaps. But the we have done have not made sense. Should I clarify that with the lawmaster? You know, I think I Probably. trust that they know what they they're doing on that front. <laughs> I'm, so. I'm, I'm, let us clarify just to be safe. Uh, okay, I, I'll... Are we really going to ask the lawmasters, like, hey, are you going to post up on the roof with no arms or weapons? What? He How incompetent do we and... think the local law enforcement is? Well, they elected well, him to be their leader. That question answered. <laughs> what no, was that, you're right. you're right, Kaimana. I don't want that question. <laughs> <laughs> the lawmaster's going to bring a ham sandwich. You know that, so. Exactly. I mean, we're going to find out. <laughs> True. Um, we should give them the heads up that we are fighting someone who can summon shadow beasts, just so that's not completely out of the blue for them. Uh, well, yes. you know, maybe we want to have them actually show up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I has a point. We'll just tell them that he may have reinforcements uh, with him. Animals. He might have animals. He might have pets. Um, yeah. Should I be taking notes? Nope. Uh, no. 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 Oh. no. So I'm. I don't have to. I don't have to do anything. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> You uh, literally you don't have to be here at all. Oh, okay. actually, he does because we need him um, to draw Soren out for a conversation. Oh. Once the fighting starts, you can run and hide, though. Yes. Oh, I thought. We'll make a okay. barrel for you to hide in. So I will be the one talking to Soren. We will go with you, but he's not going to just randomly talk, walk up to us and start talking. He's going to come up to you, and then we can carry the conversation from there, and you can hide behind Mar and then run away when the fighting starts. Oh, uh, that sounds like a, a good plan. Yes, uh, a, a, a brave plan. I shall be the face. I shall be hey, the voice. Hey, Roland, why didn't you tell me he looks like me? Why couldn't you give me that heads up? It was weird. <laughs> uh, well, I don't... He looks... Uh, well, he always wore a hood. Um, he looks like you. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I guess pale, moody, uh, makes sense. Oh my god, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't, 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 did he cut himself? I lean over to Kamana and go, he's got a point. <laughs> no. Do I remember, did he, did he cut himself to activate the points like she does? No, he yeah. pulled, um, you saw him kind of like pull a, sh a shadow literally out of the air. And it kind of wrapped around his arm, uh, and then when he threw out his dagger, his it, the dagger was a was a shadow form. It wasn't um, an actual like dagger. Yeah. Not nearly as cool as blood magic. Just no. gonna put that out there. Not as not as cool at all. Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of cool. So okay. He wants it. He wants it. You cannot. So I will check with the lawmaster to make sure they're bringing weapons. And yes. I will, I will talk to a man who can sh summon shadow beasts, but then I will run and hide in a barrel when the fighting starts. Listen, if he wants to burn down the whole town, he's probably not going to be focused on killing you directly, oh, right? He well, probably just assumes you will die in the fire. That's why you're hiding in the barrel. 
with water in it. <laughs> oh, that that's a that's smart. I, I was not sure if I was, should have been comforted by what you were saying, but now I feel much better. Thank you. It was meant to be comforted. <laughs> <laughs> if um, you're going to come out of this unscathed, maybe wet. <laughs> that's a, Hopefully the entire town comes out of the tent. That's a, a regular day for me. Um, so, uh, I there are a couple. Um, there are some keys behind the bar. Uh, feel free to to take any number of rooms. Uh, there there is a, a bath on the th uh, the second floor. Um, feel free to use. Uh, it is all yours. Um, there's no food, uh, but um, if you go to the I can. I'll have Joss bring over some some something for you to eat for dinner. Um, but I will go. Sure I, I will go make sure everything is set up and ready for t tomorrow. Then. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So Roland leaves. Uh, I turn to Mar. Like, why? Why, why did Sodom resemble you so much? I don't know. <laughs> Seen him before? He just looks like. No. <laughs> I just. I don't know, like, I spent a lot of time cultivating this look, and I'm very proud of it, and, you know, to have someone else just kind of walk up and have it too is just, you know, it doesn't feel great. Are you, you don't have a long lost... Go ahead, come on up. Wait, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> you don't have a... You don't have a brother or long lost sister, do you? <laughs> I mean, if they were long lost, I don't think I'd know about them, huh? <laughs> You might know about them, just not where they are. Uh, what's about, what's no, about members? Only, only child, so. What's, what's about members of like? your original? What's your my dad look like? Look like? Um, uh, I'm going to test my fucking knowledge of my own backstory. <laughs> I don't think uh, you told me that. So this will I don't be, think I told you. This will I'm be trying new to remember to me. which of my parents was human and which was elf. I think my dad was the elf, right? Makes That's sense. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, like me, but more elf. I guess. Was he the uh, born elf -like? rambunctious type? Uh, I mean, he was an actor, so... so oh, are, God. <laughs> there are decent odds of there being siblings of yours out there. Captain. I mean, I don't... I don't know what my dad was up to. You know, he didn't really tell me about his escapades before he met my mom, but he traveled around. I don't know. Maybe. Are there other members of your regiment who dress like you, who would perhaps have defected, or...? Um, I mean, there's not really, like, a, like a hard dress code, you know? It's kind of up to the interpret. It's just the emblem, really. I've just, I've just realized, Ma, that we, we started this entire group because of you, and we know very little about you. Oh. That's weird. Maybe... We could take this time to get to know each other better. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, what do you, what do you want to know? <laughs> uh, as much as you can tell, why, what, why were you sent from the deep woods uh, out into these towns to create this group? Oh, I mean, you? uh, my boss, um, she's the head of the order I'm a part of, she, you know, the, the one I can can talk to on my, uh, you know, little magic thing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, uh, what? training, I guess, like final kind of stage of training, you know, it's, you, you go off and you, you do your solo mission and you, they told me, hey, probably find a group or you'll die alone. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's fair. So I found a group, you know, mm -hmm. they told me go to Broadfield, there's probably people there. So I, you know, went. It's not, I, there's really not much uh, interesting about me. What was your so. group you found? Hmm? Said you found a group. <laughs> it, it, is, it is us. We are the. Oh! No, it was a different God. group. Uh, they all died. And then I went back to Garfield. <laughs> and then I met you guys. And it was, yeah. So You're basically really... Charles Xavier. Your first X Men died, and now you go. <laughs> right. Yes. And I'm just, you know, recreating to fill the hole in my heart where my previous <laughs> group was. Yeah. You must have been a very capable fighter for them to send you out all by yourself to start this. Ah, I mean, I, you know, I went through training pretty fast, I guess. So mm -hmm. didn't get held back or anything. Now we know she's hot. 
What led uh, you to join the group in the first place? Oh, they kind of recruited me. Uh, so, yeah. Because of your natural... Kind of wandering around before, didn't really have a lot of purpose. Um, and, you know, they found me and were like, hey, you want to join the ranks? And I was like, I guess I have nothing better going for me at the moment. So, you know, that's... Uh, your family was fine with you joining? I um, haven't talked to my parents in a while, so... Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm yeah. My family, so it's sad to hear that you are, you are not... Uh, I mean, uh, you, uh, we parted on okay terms. It's just been a while. What caused the rift in your family, if you don't mind me asking? That may be getting a little personal at this point. Yeah, uh, oh, man, the blood is just drying to my skin. I think I'm going to take it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we can take a break. It's, it's, I, I, don't know. I was. Oh, I think it's your turn, Abel. Abel. Yes, I'm an open book, honestly. Abel. Yes, Maybe come on. Maybe we start with things you don't want to know. And then we can fill the rest out from there. Ah, I'd, I'd, was I being too too forward? Just a bit. Okay, I I apologize, Ma. If I made you uncomfortable. What? I'm like halfway to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, you make your way up to the the second floor, and there's a door mm -hmm. at the end of the hallway, and it's a, a spacious bathroom with a claw footed tub, um, and a spigot to to pour some hot water in. Is there, only, is, is there more than one bathroom? No, there's only one. Uh, well, I, will, uh, I will drink milk with Soros and Kaimana. It's <laughs> really good milk. Okay. Mm. Yeah, is it, is it warm milk? Just boys drink, being boys. Drinking <laughs> their milk. Boys drinking boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, no. not, it's not refrigerated, it's fresh. Okay, so yeah, it will be warm, right? Yeah. I mean, not like fresh from the teat, fresh, but you know, oh, yeah. All right, that's where he's doing in the storage closet. That's crazy. <laughs> he's got one of those special cows in there, like. Let's hope there's a cow in there. Oh God. Row row. Ah. I hope I did not offend Ma. I did not mean to push too hard. I think it's kind of easy to offend Ma. Next time you can offer some insights of your own so that she doesn't feel like she's the only one. Yes. Maybe a, like, trade. I say something about me, and then you say something about you. Come on, I think that is a good idea. I will try that next time. All right. So as Mar is um, taking a bath, anything else? You guys continue your conversation. Um, going up to your rooms, you can. You have the 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 evening ahead of you. You can do whatever you like with your time. Do we have the entire like bar to ourselves, basically? Uh, yeah. As uh, aside from Tavik, who apparently wasn't a paying customer. Uh, you have ne never seen anybody else come into the Golden Ass Tavern. This is not a good business plan. A waste of an <laughs> like, it must be outrageous. <laughs> I know. You go to a bar for alcohol and they've got milk. Yeah. Um, I think maybe I don't think we have anything left to tinker with today. Which is usually what I would do when I was nervous or had some time to kill. I'm going to try <laughs> brewing a healing potion. Okay. Um, go ahead and you are proficient in herbalism kit, correct? Yes. All right. And if you have, we'll say, uh, if you have 25 gold, we can assume that um, there is... There are, uh, there's a general store. There are other little <laughs> shops around town. It would maybe take you an hour to put together the ingredients, but if you have 25 gold, you could 
put enough ingredients together. It would take uh, the next eight hours to brew, but you could get it started, and then while you sleep tonight, it could finish up. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. All right, good. Um, so that's Markov 25 gold. I think I'll just go up to my room and I'll take out my puzzle box. Okay. And I'll lock the door. And I, I'll have, I have not added the gold to my character sheet, Josh, so you just have to... That's fine. You know, listen. Did you And did you link into the campaign yet? I did link into the campaign, but Sweet. I haven't added all everything from the previous That's fine. And, and you guys still have some stuff that you have to divide up, too. So you, you 25 gold, you probably definitely have for sure. So. <laughs> I thought, did we not divide the gold up? I don't know we if you did. did. Yeah. I think we, we, did, we divided the last batch up because um, that's where we, I did the translation for what was what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we gave him the gold for the um, admission fee, right? For yeah, the, you guys yeah. paid the 70 gold. Yeah, you're all good. Yeah, there was, there was something like 12 gold and some silver and copper from yeah, there. My... Also, I would like to retcon that my father was an elf. My father was human. My mother was an elf. I did look at my own backstory and realize <laughs> I'm a clown. That's so. okay. No. It happens. Actors. Yes. Kind of detail Mar wouldn't. He was an actor, though. That was correct. I'm really. Your father was. I'm really Unless glad you said. Who knows? <laughs> I'm really glad you said that the dad was. When you said the dad was an elf and an actor, my head immediately went to like where he could have been an actor. Um, so now I have to rethink that. <laughs> no. Oh wow. Well. Hey, mom could have also Sorry. been an actress. They met in the theater. Yeah. He was, he was doing he summer would, stock. I mean, well, I won't say any more of my own backstory than is necessary. So. You're you're yeah, in a fun. cloud of bubbles right now. Yeah. Um, Roland has stocked the bath with some very fine fragrance. There's some sandalwood and lavender. It's a milk bath. And, That's crazy. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a cow in the corner, just. Like, <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Kaimana's making a potion. Um, Mars bathing. And then I'll yeah. Once I like finish with that, I will do my journaling okay um so the the rooms here uh there are a couple rooms that actually have balconies so um mm -hmm. you might find yourself into one of those and you go kind of out onto the balcony and it's not like a balcony you can sit on it's just like one of those french balconies where you can just kind of go up and there's the railing um mm -hmm. but it gives you a clear view of the the moon um mm -hmm. and it is definitely like three quarters full okay do i know like roughly how many days um you're well it's probably over three quarters full. you're looking at um well you know when the full moon is because it's the same right. day as the day of ascension the, which is in yeah three, which is in three days yeah okay mm -hmm. cool uh, i'm gonna find a small table like a, a table round uh the wobbliest one in here okay uh, and then I'm going to climb on top of it and practice my forms. All right. Um, so these are all, like, all of the table. Go ahead and roll a perception check or, or investigation as you're specifically looking at all these tables. Um, I rolled a nat one. Yeah, so. <laughs> what, like a table. What you discover as you go around is that you, you do not find a table that is wobbly. Um, all of these are incredibly new and well built. Uh, so you're kind of running into that. I still find one that I can get up on top of. Okay, they're basically small, so I don't have plenty of room. There's a couple like uh, kind of high, higher top, narrower tables, and so you pop up on one of those and you kind of go through your exercises um, using that as a as a form of balance. Mm -hmm. At yep. some point, Roland uh, returns with Joss, and she drops off a bunch of sandwiches, and she's just kind of she kind of watches you for a moment, enthralled at what you're doing. Um, Roland goes back into the storage closet for a while. Um, like, <laughs> uh, and then the, the, the kind of the day goes on. Um, and then if there's nothing else you guys want to accomplish, we can wipe to night and a full right to rest. Wait, wait. Okay, go Before ahead. We, yep. yeah. Rutherford would not have any type of um, like magical sales, uh, general store or magic shop. Uh, you can ask... Uh, I mean, you ask Roland, um, and he's, he says, uh, no, um, uh, maybe one day, but most people uh, travel to the, 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 the capital city is the closest city where you might find magic shops or enchanters or things like that. 
there's no one in town with a reputation for working with uh, even Najiko. Uh, the, there are members of the Acumen who study those things and perhaps <laughs> have the ability to enchant or make magic items, uh, but they but they mostly just do studying out at the monastery. It's either that or training. Um, so is, I don't they don't I don't think that they actually produce anything there. Is Herman still here? Is who? Um, oh, Herman. Um, he well, he was at the the, the lawmaster last I knew. I imagine he's probably returned to the monastery for the evening at this point. Uh, um, as, can I just before I uh, go to my room for the night and pull out my little puzzle box, I will run back to the lawman and see if Herman is there. If okay. I can get some. Uh, you get there and Don't split the party. <laughs> uh, um, you the, it's, too late it's dark um, and you're making your way through kind of the candle or the the, the torchlit uh, city streets and you get my to, night of dark yeah you dark. get to the the lawmaster's office and it's actually locked and closed and the there's no lights on inside uh, except you see one like through the window there's one kind of dim candle in the corner like at the back of the room that's lit but everything else is dark it seems like the lawmaster has gone home for the evening okay that's when i decide to go back to my room and i'll pull out my puzzle box okay roll two back to back uh, intelligence my, checks yeah. adding your proficiency okay. bonus just roll okay. an intelligence plus your proficiency bonus intelligence intelligence uh, this one Sixteen. Okay. Second one. Natural twenty. All right. So, so 20, um, twenty-five. <laughs> so you're you're trying to recreate the the pattern that you only got half of thanks to Kaimana's interruption, um, and you managed to click it into place, uh, and a new no. a new portion of the box opens that wasn't there before. Um, and there's new mechanisms to kind of move and shift around. And when you get to one point, uh, it's almost as if like part of the box opens like this, and there's just a black hole in the center of the box that when you mm -hmm. look into, there's no light coming out or anything. There's just a black hole at the center of the box. Okay. Now I stick my finger in it. Okay, you stick your finger in, and there's a, a very clearly distinct difference in the temperature from where your finger goes to from where it's coming from. And do I recognize this at all from my studies with my teacher, or would this have, would this have been of any importance to me? Unfortunately, um, he was trying to explain this to you when he showed you this pattern, and you didn't get all the information. But you've never seen anything like this before. Okay. Hole in a box. <laughs> oh, oh, no, not my intention. No. No. So wrong. Yeah. Okay. Was it warmer? <laughs> it was a little, it was colder when you put your was... hand in. Yeah. Thank God. Your finger in. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, some people like that. So. Uh, All right. I'll uh, leave. <laughs> yeah. Please don't leave right. me with these people. All right. Anything else? <laughs> Marlo just no. feels a disturbance in the force. <laughs> Marlo slams her journal shut and knows that somewhere is being stupid somewhere. <laughs> no. I will just, I'll sit and meditate on it and think about what this new puzzle unlocking means. Okay. Uh, after about five minutes of kind of holding the box, the box click, 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 click and reverts back to its original form. And cool. the, the little hole disappears. Mm -hmm. You're getting this at like that as you unlock stages of the box, um, they only hold for so long before they snap back to the basic. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just I'll play with it a little bit until it's time to sleep. I bet you will. All right. So, um, uh, if, if, if a uh, <laughs> I will this campaign. Do you hear? <laughs> if a Cenobite appears. I'm out of here. Yeah. So, you, know. <laughs> okay. uh, you can always tell when it's time for break by how everybody's just ready with it's the super. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's almost time for Halloween, so Hellraiser totally makes sense at this point. So. Ugh. Please no. All right. Um. So, anybody else accomplish anything else before the evening goes? 
All right. So um, with the knowledge that most likely tomorrow um, the Soren is returning to town, you kind of all go off and to attempt to get a, a restful sleep um, and see what the, the next day brings. So we'll go ahead and take our 10 minute break there. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. All right, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. All right, so uh, so welcome back from the break. Uh, the next morning, as the sun rises, uh, Mar and Abel both, as you awake, you feel that whatever effects from the the day before have worn off, and you are back to your full um, hardiness. Uh, whatever the shadow creature did has faded. Uh, and then you all come together downstairs. Uh, Joss is there with um, a plate of what looks like just kind of biscuits. And um, there's some, some, she's fried up some bacon and there's a few eggs and things. And she's just like, um, I know you all have a, a, a potentially big day ahead of you. So I, I wanted to make sure you started off with a, a good, um, a good hearty breakfast. Um, so, Thank you. I've got to go open the store, I suppose. Thank you. And so she she heads out. Uh, Roland is not there at the moment, so it's just the the four of you. Oh, Sally. Pack the bacon. Sorry. I've been distracted. Yes, <laughs> I will. Uh, I will eat a, a fair share of bacon and eggs. Toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you all are kind of sitting there eating and kind of just uh waking up from the the night before um roland does enter and uh he says oh oh good you're all awake and uh, you're you're getting a good meal um so i suppose that we have uh this is the the, the day for uh, this and hopefully uh we can solve this this problem <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, so typically he tends to come in the morning. Um, I uh, I told the lawmaster that it might be best if the uh, if he had the, the 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 watchman kind of go around and and warn the townspeople to stay away from the town square. Um, <coughs> Are, you know, in the morning time that they were doing something. Um, so hopefully there will no, be no townspeople around, but that's uh, about all I've got. Um, Let's go outside and wait then. All right. So you all, you all head out and um, it's a, it's a, not a bright <clears throat> sunny day. Um, o over the course of the night, some clouds moved in uh, and it's kind of overcast, maybe a threat of rain. Uh, and, you're kind of there, and, and there are a few townspeople who are making their way um, through the square, but seemingly in a more hurried fashion, trying to get where they need to go. It's like a, like an old Western movie when everyone knows that shit's about to go down at, at, at noon, and the townspeople still got to go buy their can of beans, and so they uh, have to kind of rush around. And um, eventually, at some point, you find that the, the five of you are the only ones in the square, and... <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, and eventually you do see uh, coming up the main thoroughfare at the center of town uh, you see a, a figure um, in a black cloak the hoods down uh, and he's flanked on either side by two other figures and as they get closer um, you immediately see um, Mar you recognize immediately Soren standing there and for everyone else who hasn't seen him yet um, uh, a late 20s age looking half elf um, jet black hair kind of long and spiky shaved on one side but it looks like it wasn't shaved for like mar for purposeful he has a, a he has a pretty pronounced scar on that side of his face um, and he's wearing sleeveless leather armor and he has uh, a rapier uh, at his side, a very wicked looking rapier with a, a like a, a black handle with red uh, wrapping on it and the and like the scabbard is jet black itself. Um, 
and he has a the the cloak he's wearing is just kind of a long black cloak uh, that he flicks over to his side and exposes his arm which you can see is also heavily scarred on the same side as his face um, the other person with him on on his right is a tall um oh i wrote this realm wrong i i did she's a tiefling <laughs> uh, a tiefling um female uh dressed in what looks like um kind of not like belly dancer attire but like very much like that kind of like top that just covers the her chest area with a kind of a, a bluish color and um like almost like hammer pants um and but strapped across her back is a very wicked looking great axe and then um behind him <laughs> on the opposite side is a dwarven fellow who as he's walking up to you is just drinking every now and then out of a jug about this big um and <clears throat> he gets up and like once they kind of get close to you and they stop he kind of like <clears throat> like burps a little bit and you can see he's already kind of like swaying on his feet uh and then soren kind of just looks up at you and, and then glances towards roland and he says so it's going to be that kind of conversation is it and roland goes uh d d these are these are just my uh this is the adventurers guild uh as i said we were founding you know the adventurers guild and, and these are just the members i thought you might want to meet them they're kind of local celebrities now and and um soren looks over at Mar and he goes, oh, I think that we've already made our acquaintance, haven't we? He really did steal your look. Mm. Did yeah. he Ah, uh, well, so, do you have the money? Rolling, uh, no, uh, as I said yesterday, um, that we are still short by close to a thousand gold that's exactly how much you owed us so that means you have none of it uh, yes I, as i as i said um but we will get it of course uh, the adventurers guild is taking off and um and as you can see they seem very confident they will absolutely raise the funds for broadfield to repay you um and we can absolutely handle this peacefully and soren uh, looks over the, the four of you um, and then looks at Mar and goes and says was it very peaceful yesterday I don't know I think it was pretty easy actually hmm. I see the scar on your arm oh I mean I you know do it to myself all the time they're just gonna blend in at this point <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles a little bit and then why do you not want your money? Oh, well, I would prefer the money. Uh, I would happily walk out of this town and leave it to the trash that it is with the thousand gold in hand. But seeing that that is not the case, uh, there are other towns in the Riverlands that we can absolutely benefit from a partnership with. And they might... Yes, but you're throwing away a current partnership. Mm, but it's you're not a paying you, you, partnership. You're losing... You're losing your money without getting anything in return. Those that I work for believe very heartily in a contract and upholding a contract. But and you can amend a contract. Hmm. It sometimes is better to have a threat. And I can walk into another town, make a similar contract, and say, you remember what happened to Broadfield. Just so you know, the crown is aware of your little scheme you have going on here. In its town, you? We've already sent word. Yes. The syndicate is not concerned with the crown. Perhaps you should be. Mm -hmm. Like my friend here was telling you, it is better for you simply to give them time to raise the money and walk away. I recognize your accent. No avian. Your people have threatened the syndicate for a hundred years, and we've only grown. That is because we value human life. If it were any different, we could have snuffed you out long ago. Mm, that is where you miss out. 
you see, human life is just one tool that you can use to advance your own aims. Just like magic, just like a sword. Sometimes you have to break down one weapon to forge a new one. Are you here to negotiate or just spit flowery, flowery language? Eh? Oh, well, I'm happy to talk to you, but this is not a negotiation. I think it's best for you simply to turn around and leave. No. This gets ugly. No. No. Maybe too late. Too bad you don't want to. Too bad you don't want to double your money. <clears throat> double our money. I don't think your little ragtag band can promise me two thousand gold. Why not? What assurance would you have that I would have that in a time? That is uh, amenable. <coughs> what is well, amenable? Think about it this way. The town will still be here to burn. You can take a chance at doubling your money and come out ahead. And at the worst, you end up killing everybody and burning the town down and still getting your example. So today I am supposed to walk away with 1,000 gold. Tomorrow I walk away with 2,000, is what you said? We would need more than a day. Mm, but that doubles our current predicament. You knew when you entered this contract that it would be nearly impossible for them to give up. This was your plan from the beginning, wasn't it? Perhaps. You know the uh, the workings of the syndicate, I'm sure, my little otter friend. We've had encounters with your kind before. Rolling. <laughs> what? What? The barrel behind your shop. <laughs> That's very far away. <laughs> Roland starts to slowly back away. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and like get my little force ballista out and affix it to my gauntlet. Are you trying to be? Um, are you trying to not draw attention to the fact that you're attaching what appe appears to be a weapon? Okay. Um, no. So the moment you do that, Soren flicks his cloak aside and exposes the rapier. Some Just of you talk no negotiation, talk. and some of you are wait moving to attack. Is that what I see? Well, negotiations are coming to a head. A grin crosses his face. Exactly like we wanted it, yes. How far away from me is he? Uh, well, I could, let's see. Um, I will pull up the map and I'll let you guys decide where you were in relationship to him. Uh, doo -doo -doo. The old Texas standoff. <laughs> yeah. Where I'm assuming that since I've been talking to him that I've gotten somewhat close. Yeah, correct? I I had you. I figured that you would you or Abel would be the ones to do the the talking in this situation. So I had you closer. I think. So mm -hmm. now, Josh, why did you not assume that I would be handling <laughs> these negotiations? You know, it's just one of those things. I don't right. know what happened with the, <laughs> the map. Hold on. <clears throat> um, Jesus, what's that? Camera failed. No, I need you to not fail, camera. Camera failed again. Okay, hold on a second. I can move the other camera over there. One set. <coughs> Ugh, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Jim Henson did it. Oh, I ordered a Mar Mini. She should be coming soon. Yeah, I need to get my I need to get my Saurus Mini to Josh. So yes. That... 
the the first color painted one I got off of Hero Forge. Ooh, you did. Nice. I oh. did. Did you already show everybody? I said, Money I don't have. Oh no. no. Did you already show everybody, or is it? Did I miss you uh, showing? I Oh, no, I have a picture. I will oh, cool. Send it yes, the send it to the group. Chat. All right, so right now, Soros, I have you here um, with him, you know, kind of 10 feet away from you. And then Mar, I figured you'd probably be one off to, to the side, Kaimana and Abel uh, in the back. Mm -hmm. um, the the I, I tried to find three, like, guards members I didn't have. Um, so the dice back in the back, which you can only see two of them right now, but they're back there. The guards are positioned on top of the watchman um, post, kind of in the back up on the roof. You've got Soren, and then the the, the tiefling female, uh, and then the dwarven male who appears to be drunk is there. He's a drunken master. That'll be a fun fight. I'll be taking <laughs> him on. Um during the course of conversation with him, I will have moved closer to him. Okay. Uh, close enough that since things have come to the point we are, I sucker kick him in the nuts. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll an unarmed strike on him. And while you're doing that, everyone else go ahead and roll initiative. Matt 20. Sweet. I rolled another one. I rolled another one. Oh, shit, Mar. <laughs> okay. Uh, just... Let me get everybody's initiative count, and then um, I'll get your dam and then go ahead and roll your damage on that too, Source. So, Abel, what was your initiative? Uh, Nineteen. All right, Mar. Uh, so that's a six, right? It is a six. Kaimana. <laughs> is there a uh, initiative button on D and D Beyond, or is it just yeah, it is. If you click initiative, it should roll. Yeah. You yeah, it's right the initiative next to number. Um, and I rolled a twenty-three for initiative. Sweet. Ooh, I like this die. Nineteen for initiative. Nineteen, sweet. Know, oh, and sure. Roland rolled a sixteen, which I don't have him on the map, but um, he's back behind you somewhere. So I'll put a dice out for him I'm in just a second. He's rolling. Um, for for crit damage, I am completely spacey from work. Um, am I doubling my bonus or just the die roll? Uh, just the dice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a total of nine. Nine points of damage to. That's a good. That's a hit good to first hit. Nuts. All right, so um, you you strike out uh, in the middle of like his shit talking grin, uh, and the moment you do, like Roland, uh, Soaring kind of kicks over for a second, and uh, and then that's where we're gonna pick up. Hold on, I'm pausing for just one second for some reason. This didn't work. Uh, doo, doo, doo. I apologize. It's too late to apologize. Come on, you're 21 hit points, is that right? Uh, I am 23. 23, okay. okay. Oh, that's and right. I'm 23 as well. Never mind, I'm 21. Okay. I just, for some reason, I accidentally, I, when I resorted the, my initiative box, all my HPs got mixed up. I'm 23. All right. I'm 24. That's three. I'm 32. Yeah. Oh, I had you. I've rolled really, I've rolled really good every time. I had you at 18, so that's really good. Um, Abel, that you told me that. Yes, that was. Yeah, I was way back. When... <laughs> 23. I mean, I mean, said, okay, cool. Stuff. Yeah, I accidentally sorted just one row instead of all the rows. Rows. All right, mm. all right. So, um, so with that, uh, Soren kind of doubles over for a second, and we'll say that he doesn't go prone, but he kind of drops to one knee, uh, and that kicks things off. Uh, which means Soros, like you take him off guard, and then you immediately get to make uh, another strike. It's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna vault him and go for the dwarf. Okay, so you jump over him. And then take off for the dwarf roll, and we'll make a attack of opportunity at you. Um, wrong. Oh no! Enemy opportunity attacks have disadvantage. A disadvantage. On turn one. Seventeen, which is very helpful because you rolled an eighteen, but then he rolled a seven, so that's a a, a twelve. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, good. So he he swings out at you, but you did take out his left testicles, so he is not able to make contact. Um, and so you get up in the face of this dwarf, um, who's kind of just like 
stumbling there and like uh, kind of uh, looking at you through bleary eyes, uh, wearing a robe and carrying a staff. Um, but you can go ahead and um, make your attacks against him. Uh, first attack, natural 19. That'll so hit. That is, yep. Uh, and that is going to be, I love this dice. That's a 20, two 19s They're in a row. They're killing it. Oh, two 19s. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that is eight damage. Okay, second attack. And then I'm going to Flurry of Blows. All right. Let me take off my key point. Two more. Uh, 11. Uh, 11 does not hit. Um, 21. Uh, all right, that one hits as well. Uh, that is going to do five damage. Okay. And um, I am using the uh, way of the open hand, um, and it can't. Uh, and I'm going to impose. It can't take reactions until my next turn. Okay, so he cannot take reactions. Let me go ahead and put a tab on him. Uh, which means I am going to move up behind Roland so that Mar can get flanking on him. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, was that, what was that last part, Rob? I missed that. I was putting gravity. Uh, I'm going to move back behind Roland, basically take one step up so that Mar can get flanking on him. Sounds uh, one, good. One to the left uh, there. One to the left? Okay, cool. Uh, Boom. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so that ends. I love our, like, dual tank position. Yeah. <laughs> it's very fun. Like, no, I might have well, 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 set her up. I love like you guys yeah, use and... flanking. You guys use it because so many people forget that it's a thing. So that's great. Uh, so that it, that culminates with my move. All right, so there I'm you go. All round. right, which takes us to Abel. Oh, it's me already. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can we don't use firebolt? <laughs> um, use firebolt. It will work this time. <laughs> I'm not going to use Firebolt because I don't think it will work. Uh, let me pin the battle map so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay. So I'm pinned 5, 10, 15. Um, I, I'll take a shot at uh, rolling up front with the, the catapult spell. At Soren? No, is that... You're shooting at Soren? Oh, Soren, yes, I'm sorry. Because poor Roland doesn't deserve that as much as he is a shifty guy. <laughs> I don't know why no, he was, what he was saying is that he was going to use Roland as the captain. Now, hold on. Roland drinks a lot of milk, so maybe his bones are very strong and his HP is actually a lot higher than he has to. Yes. I just would like to propose that to the group. Commoner HP. Go. All right, so you're going to catapult at Soren. Okay, so it's a dexterity saving throw. Yes, it is. All right. Does he have disadvantage because he's bent over with his nuts up his ass? Uh, I'll <laughs> give him disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, but so, so the first one was an 18 plus 5. So this is a 10 plus 5, 15. Yeah, he saves. All right. So you launch the catapult and the object kind of flies across and he catches it in the air and just drops it to his side. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And then I'll take my bonus action for the force ballista. Uh, you don't have the Force Ballista up. Oh, I thought I pulled... Okay, well, I'll take... Okay. Didn't he put it... Yeah, he put it oh, on yeah, you put it on. Yeah, so we'll say that you did, mm -hmm. like, you were taking an action to do that before. Yeah, I was thinking you took it out, but... All right, good, so you, you can go ahead and fire off your Force Ballista. Okay. Thank you, DM. <laughs> no, that Rob caught that, yeah. <laughs> that is a 15 plus 5. That hits... Uh, 11 points of damage all right 11 points so as he catches the the rock in the air and drops it he turns back and kind of sneers in your direction and then poof, you take a full blast across his chest and he kind of <laughs> spins back and he glares in your direction uh you definitely have his attention now um all right anything oh, else you want to do with your turn uh i'll take just a few steps no, I'll stay where I am. I'll stay where okay. I am. Okay. All right. Um, and that takes us to Kaimana. All right. So uh, we've got the dwarf is where? Dwarf's here. Okay. The, the tiefling is here. And then Soren. Um, are any of them wearing um, chainmail or plate or like metal armor? 
Uh, they are not wearing uh, any me metal armor. Uh, the tiefling does have a metal great axe, and Soren's rapier is made of metal. Okay. So you now uh, come on a cast, and you see now, like, not one little otter, but there's three little otters kind of, like, sh almost, like, shifting places and, like, kind of moving around each other in that space, and they move up next to you, Mar. And it would be really cute if you weren't in the middle of battle. It probably still is cute, actually, so. <laughs> I try to very seriously nod to kind of <laughs> Very <laughs> good. All right. Um, anything else, uh, come on with your go? All right, which takes us to Roland. Uh, Roland is going to ski daddle. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, uh, and then he'll dash 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, so he gets behind uh, the building, does discover a barrel, jumps into it. Wrong barrel, it's filled with trash, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> he is at home. Um, <laughs> all right, which takes us to Soren. So Soren is going to, let's see what Soren would like to do. Um, it's only fair. Yeah, so he's going to turn to you uh, and make one attack against you. With his, He draws his rapier and slipes, slipes it out at you, and that is a 19 to hit. Yes. Um, so from that, you take only... Uh, that was a two. Uh, only four point, or five points of uh, piercing damage. But uh, the moment the, the blade strikes you, you feel this like searing pain where the wound is, and you see it's kind of pulsing with this energy um, that feels pretty bad. Um, you are technically now wounded, mm -hmm. and on the beginning of your next turn, that'll have an effect. But um, And then at that point, he, it, well, he turns, and he's going to throw a dagger uh, mar in your direction. Uh, that won't hit. I haven't uh, even fucking done anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then as as soon as the dagger leaves his hand, you see him grab the shadows around him, and he pops out and disappears from the battlefield in a puff of, of smoke uh, in shadow. Um, all right, which takes us to the guards. Um, so the three guards at the back, um, as Roland was going by, he yelled up like, it's it's something bad that's going on. And so they are up there and they are all notching arrows um, and they are kind of far, but they are all gonna take pot shots at the, um, at the tiefling. Miss, hit, miss. So uh, the tiefling does take five point or four points of piercing damage as one of the guards is able to make contact with her. Um, all right. And then that takes us to the dwarf right in front of you, or he's now 10 feet away from you, um, Soros. And so you turn and the dwarf for a second, he, uh, he kind of looks at you uh, and he's, you know, sh shaken by your, your attack on him. Um, and he, you know, and he's kind of glares at you and he takes a drink of his alcohol and you can see, like, the moment that the, the alcohol enters into him, that there's this weird, like, aura that flashes around his body for a moment. And you he starts mumbling in some weird language, and you see that aura co coalesce around his hand, and he points it in your direction, and this bright, bluish-white beam of uh, energy slams out of his hand and right into you, and he casts Ray of Frost in your direction, um, and so I need you... Oh, it's a spell attack. Um, that is a 15. That is my armor class. That is an armor class. Okay, so you take 
four points of cold damage, and your speed is reduced by ten feet until the start of the end of your next turn. Okay. Which, yeah, the monk, that's not a huge... Um, Oh, well, I only have to move it up 35. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then he, he'll take... to be like the normal people. Yeah, he'll take a, he'll take a few steps back um, and kind of get up against the this wall here um, and sit there. All right, and then it's the tiefling's go. And so the tiefling, um, you see her stretch for a moment and start to kind of move, and she whips this uh, great axe out. And then you see like she takes a deep breath and then when she bears down her face ch uh, changes into this angry grimace and she's going to charge towards you um soren and she's going to make an attack with her great axe uh reckless so she gets advantage on the attack um 17 to hit yes and that is only I keep rolling really low. Uh, only four points of damage uh, from the great axe swing. Um, and now she's there kind of just like breathing heavily in your face. And you can see like um, this anger and frustration, but she's still kind of moving almost like, like the way a dancer moves, like, uh, um, and like she's ready to anticipate um, any kind of attacks in her direction. All right. Um, since she was reckless, does, does that not give People yes. Okay. Anybody, anybody who attacks her has advantage. Her, yep. Advantage. Yep. So yeah. she gets advantage what? on the attacks. Oh, I know. Yep. Oh, I played a barbarian. I immediately was like, hell yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, and then, so good. So that takes us to Mar. It has your go. All right. Yeah. Give me flanking with her. All right. So you move into flank, and you don't need uh, to flank for advantage because you have it on your attacks, but you can go ahead. Oh yeah. Well, I just want to be there just in case. Yep. Um, and then. Uh, Bonus action, Crimson Right. Let's get it up. I take three points of damage from that. Okay. And then, uh huh. Okay, okay, okay. And then I will, uh, yeah, attack her with my rapier. Okay, go ahead and roll. I mean, it's a twenty-three. Uh, that that does hit. So All right. <laughs> she's trying to nice. dance out of the way, and she's paying attention to Saurus, and you nail her across the back. So that is that was five is ten plus four is fourteen damage. Four of it's lightning. Four, okay, sweet. Uh, so the the strike hits and it kind of sh uh, shudders across her back, and now she's kind of uh, looking in your direction, and she's now kind of bouncing between the two of you and keeping an eye on both Soros and you. Um, anything else with your turn there, Mar? Um, no, I'm good. All right, Soros, that brings us up to you. Um. Question. Yes. Um, with my windfoot celerity, it says enemy opportunity attacks have disadvantage on turn one. Does that mean turn one of the battle or turn one of me fighting a particular person? Uh, Basically, I, does that mean I can disengage from her without her getting an opportunity attack? I think the turn one of the battle. So this okay. would be this would be the beginning of turn two. Yeah. 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 Uh, in that case, I will hit her. Okay. Go ahead and roll for your attack. Um, t two threes. Oh, no. So that's a no, miss. No. Um, and actually, as you go to punch out, she kind of like does this kind of weird flip down. And you see she grabs the great axe behind her. And as she's kind of dodging the second attack, she swings up. And Mar, um, with a 15, she hits you with her great axe on uh, a return attack. Uh, and that is a seven points of damage. Mara stepped away for a second. Oh, okay. I'll let her know when she comes back that she just got hit by... Uh, so she seems to use the dodge um, and then um, almost like a... She, riposte. A riposte, yeah. Um, and then, so that's that takes us through... Anything else you want to do there, Soros? Uh, yeah, I get a bonus attack. Yeah, you do, yep. Uh, that's much better. Uh, nat 20. Oh, okay, yeah. 14 and a 20. There you go. So, cool. Um, and that is two. Uh, eh. uh, that's only seven. Uh, you and you, that's with the double. Okay. Yeah. All right. I rolled a, <laughs> I rolled a two and a one. All right. So as she's coming back up from the hit from with the great axe, she's looking in your direction, and you just sock her across the face, and she kind of uh, stops to the side, and she stops moving for a moment, but then she goes back to um, kind of 
keeping on her toes. Uh, good. <laughs> Grace is back. Grace, you took seven points of damage. I believe you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Can I ask from what? Yeah, so when Rob went to hit her, um, she kind mm -hmm. of danced out of the way and used the energy of that move to swing an attack in your direction and connected with her great axe. Cute. Uh-huh. Um, all right, which takes us to Abel. Okay, so um, I'm going to stay at range. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to try catapulting it. I'm not going to do a fireball, even though I'm really, really fighting the urge. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's going to and... work for some time. <laughs> does, Ronnie get, does Ronnie get advantage on this still? Uh, no, because it's a dexterity saving throw for catapult. Okay. Yeah. Uh, natural 20. This bitch. Okay, that's cool. She has a really high dexterity, too, so... <laughs> um, yeah. You know, a lot of these people probably are. We got a monk and a... Well, she's not a monk. No, the the dwarf is... The though. dwarf is not yeah, a monk, he's... either. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a monk. He's nope. He's over here casting spells. Yep. Mm. Um, um, okay, so let me... I'll hit her with a... Sorry, let me put down to that cast. Catapult again. Why did I spell slot to be up? Um, and I'm gonna hit her with a force ballista. All right, go ahead and uh, roll your attack. Uh, I, I think reckless is only for melee attacks. Is that, I think, but it, I could be wrong. Can, we can look this up. Yeah, uh -huh. reckless. I wrote down what reckless does, but then I forgot to include the, the penalty on it. You can throw aside all concern for attacks. This one's a 17 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Um, Attack rolls against you yeah, have advantage. Melee. Yeah, melee weapon attack rolls. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, there it is. It does the same. Good. Other one. You're good. Yep. So all attack rolls against her would have advantage. So uh, go ahead and roll so, it with advantage. Just see mm -hmm. if you get a natural 20 on it. No, 17 and a 16. Okay, good. So go ahead and roll damage. You, may, you do make contact, though. Okay, 13 points of damage. Of damage. Ooh, 13 points of damage. Um, so you slam into her, and she's still dancing on her feet, but she's starting, like, there's blood kind of pouring from her from her nose, um, and she's her, she's holding her left arm in a weird angle. Like, she's looking pretty hurt from uh, this concerted um, attack from all sides. Um, anything else that you're doing with your turn there, Abel? No, I'll just try to keep an eye out for where it's soaring. Poof the way to. Okay. Kamana, go finish ahead. her. All right, Kamana, it's your go. Uh, I like yeah, metal. Okay. All right. Which does remind me the. I'll read it off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> creature holding or wearing the object. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll the damage, and then I'll roll her con save. Uh, yes, and she rolled a 19 on her save, so. Wow. Barbarians are tough, Beth. They are. Way of the Bear is the way to go. Oh, I love Way of the Bear. Oh, hell yeah. 15. 15. Um, so, yeah, so the she the metal starts to heat in her hand, and she kind of powers through and holds on to it, uh, but, like, it almost drops her to her, her knees from the pain, and you can kind of see, like, this wave of, like, she's on the verge of just passing out from the this, this searing pain in her hand. She's very, very close to being out. Snipers, come on through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's a kill. That's going to be really good. All right, and they get advantage. <laughs> and they do, yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, they're just within range to hit her, so they wouldn't get disadvantage on the attack. So, yep. Um, all right, anything else come on with your turn? Uh, I'm going to move four spaces forward. Okay. Yeah, all right, works. so that takes you there. Um, all right, Roland uh, stays in the trash um, barrel. Um, decides not to move. Uh, and then at that moment, um, you hear kind of behind you, Mar, a pop, 
and Soren appears out of the shadow at that point, and I need to roll to see. Where's my d10? Uh, there we go. Holy shit. Okay. Um, and then immediately behind him, you hear this gushing, roaring sound, and a shadow, the, like a shadow creature, is seems to be chasing him out of the hole. And as he pops out, he's going to make an attack against you. Oh, hold on. Um, go ahead and roll. A, well, it's, what's your uh, passive perception, Mar? Um, it's pretty high. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Um, <laughs> ah, 14. 14. Okay. So um, <laughs> so you actually don't hear the, the his appearance. Um, oh, wait, I, I have advantage on perception on hearing stuff. Oh, good. So uh, go ahead and I, go ahead yeah. and roll then for this to see if you beat his hide check. Okay. Um, can I roll with advantage? Yes. For it? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Natural twenty. <laughs> All right. So um, you you feel this wind against you and you hear this pop and you realize Soren's behind you. It doesn't give you time to dodge his attack. He's gonna make his mm -hmm. attack against you with his rapier, but. Um, but can I turn around as he's doing it and just, like, be like, oh, hi. Yeah, you absolutely. Um, but he will not get sneak attack if he does uh, make the attack. Um, but however, that is a 17 to hit. Yeah. So that does hit, and you take... Oh, that's a beefy one. Um, a beefy one? <laughs> that was a big roll. Uh, that That's t 11 points of piercing damage from his rapier attack, and you are wounded. Uh, which reminds me, Rob, um, go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw for me really quickly. Uh, constitution saving throw, constitution, constitution, right. 14. 14, okay, so you are still wounded and you took four points from the wound. Four points of damage. Uh, on your turn. I should have done that on your turn and that just reminded me of that. Um, all right, uh, so then, so Mar, and then as you are seeing this happen uh, and you're preparing to attack in his direction, Soren pops out again. I uh, hate this bastard. And now, so <laughs> and now there's a, uh, there is a shadow creature <laughs> um, where mm. he was. Um, all right, which takes us to the guards um, seeing the shadow creature pop up um, and not, they're gonna, two of them will take a shot at the at the barbarian and then one at the shadow creature uh, natural one uh, hits the barbarian hits the shadow creature um, don't forget advantage on the barbarian oh that's right okay so both will hit the barbarian um she takes she's out she took nine that took her down so the guards take her out sweet um the and then the the shadow creature, you guys watch as the um, the arrow pierces into the shadow creature, but it does not seem to do as much damage as it looks like it should have. Um, all right. That takes us to uh, the, dwarf. the dwarf fella, um, and he is going to reach out in your direction, um, Soros, and you see him kind of weaving this spell in the air, and he casts it in your direction. I need you to roll an intelligence saving throw. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, so um, as the spell lashes out, for a moment you see, like, this uh, fiery, like, demon dog appear out of the air. Like, it's going to uh, attack down and bite at you. But the moment its jaw is about to close around you, you shake your head and it vanishes in a spray of sparkly lights. Uh, the phantasmal force not taking control over your brain. Um, he kind of curses a little bit uh, and then he drinks out of his flask and he's going to take a couple more steps back. Um, down, like he's maybe heading out um, in that direction. And that's going to end his turn. Uh, Sumali is out. Mar. I guess I gotta deal with this beast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. I will. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, a Constitution saving throw at the start of your turn. For right. Me. Yeah. Um. I think that's a sixteen. Am I right? Okay. So you. Yes. Shrug off the wound and do not take the damage from the wound. Um, so you're good on that. And so now you're free to make your attacks against this the shadow, the Veil Echo. Cool. Uh, first attack, rapier. 
to natural 20. All right, uh, nice. <laughs> we uh, are getting crisp. You guys, nice. I'm rolling ones and threes, and you guys are rolling natural 20s. Um, there you go. Okay, so that, okay, so we double you, and that's, uh, okay, so that's, hold me, hold me. Uh, so that's eight. And lightning twice. Yep. Yes, so 13. Four. 17 points of damage, four of it is lightning damage. Okay, so he takes 15 total points of damage because he's resistant right. to the lightning, but right, right, right. Um, but good, nice hit. So you lash out and you tear through the shadow for a second and you think you've kind of ripped it through, but it reforms, uh, but that was a good solid hit against him with your first attack. Cool, uh, second attack, short sword. Uh, 17 plus seven. That'll 20. hit, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, where's my D6? And that is nine points of damage. Uh, halved to four. So right. um, good, because that's not a magical attack. Good. All right, so right, you right. slash out again. And um, good. Uh, so it's it's looking like it's getting to that point where it's starting to uh, kind of discombobulate. You, you get the sense that that's about... Um, halfway through what you were doing before is that like the amount of attacks and damage so he's he's starting to kind of rip apart um good okay. uh which takes us to saurus at the top of your turn go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw eight eight uh yes excuse me excuse me nine <laughs> nine um so you take another hold on let me find my d4 uh, you take another one point of damage from the wound, um, and you are still uh, wounded by the attack, um, but you are now free to... you got the shadow creature, you've got the... Uh... Uh, I'm going to close down the dwarf, okay. uh, and I want to basically... I've got 35 of movement, I want to get on the other side of him. All right, cool. I'll, so move, I'll I'm, move him I'm, for I'm... a little bit so you're... Yeah, um, I yell out, Kamana, I'm bleeding out! Um, and then I hit him. All right, go ahead and roll your attack. Uh, 20 dirty. Uh, that hits. Uh, that is going to be seven. All right, seven points of damage. And I am going to hit him again. All right. Uh, that's even higher. All right. And that does six. All right, good, nice. Um, are you gonna flurry blows or are you gonna hold it? That that was it. That was it. I'm oh, that was it. Okay. Flurry, oh, okay. Damn. You did both of them. All right, cool. All right. Um, there you go. So uh, he's you kind of knock him and like he's already dazed from the alcohol, but he he looks like he's it's hard, he's not holding his balance as well as he was even though he was drunk uh, before. Uh, good, and that takes. And us... I'm in threat range, so if he tries to spell chat, spell cast, he gets disadvantage unless he moves away, in which case he'll give me an attack of opportunity. That is true. Um, all right, so then that takes us to the shadow creature who's going to move uh, into Kaimana and uh, Mar. Uh, so Kaimana, he's going to make an attack out on you um, with mirror image. What does the what's the disadvantage that he gets up with mirror image? So with Okay, um, so you go ahead and roll your d20, and we'll see if the attack hits you or the duplicate. Okay, so um, you... If, Six or higher. So the first attack does contact you, I think. Uh, does a, a 15 breaks your AC? Okay, so the first attack... No, I have 15 AC. 15. So you're like, okay, the duplicate's going to get it. The duplicate doesn't get it, and then you rip your shield up just in time, and the claws rape, rake, rake across the shield, and um, you kind of shunt off the the initial attack, and then Mar, the uh, the bludgeoning bla uh, attack is coming in your direction. Um, with the, That is a 15 to hit. Does not hit. Does not hit. So you dodge. You dodge out of the way of the bludgeoning attack, which is good because you know exactly what that does. So, <laughs> um, all right. 
Very nice. And that takes us to Abel. Oh. I'm going to do my tried and true never miss firebolt. Okay. <laughs> On the shadow creature? Yeah, I'm going to try to hit the... I got 120. I probably could hit the dwarf. You, uh, you could, yeah. Um, how's that shadow creature looking? Is he pretty stable? He, he's kind of, he's struggling to hold on to his form, but he's not like glitching in and out like he was when he was almost down before. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to take a hit at the shadow. I mean, at the dwarf actually. Okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. Be a natural twenty. Natural yeah. twenty. Nice. First time this is actually ever hit. All right, go ahead and roll your attack. Uh, roll the dice. It even doubles the dice. It does, yeah. It says 2d10. Okay. Hold on, it's not clicking. Okay, that's 14 damage. 14 points of damage. Um, so you make solid content. Like you, uh, Gerard is focused on, or the dwarf is focused on Soros, uh, and then from behind, he gets kind of blasted in the middle of his back, and he lunges forward a little bit, uh, and he's now like kind of stumbling on his feet uh, and looks very, very, very hurt from that blast. I'll take my bonus action, and this time I'll aim it at the, uh, the Shadow Beast for my um, Force Boost. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I score up that little elephant uh-huh it's 13 plus 5 to hit and 18 to hit that hits and damage it's gonna be uh only eight force damage all right eight force damage so the the blast uh, contacts with the 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 echo and it kind of separates for a moment and then reforms uh around the hole where the blast went through um, but it was a very a solid attack against him uh any movement or anything you want to do with yourself there abel uh, no, I'll stay kind of where I am. Actually, I'll move back a bit and put my back up against the wall. All right, there you go. Um, Kaimana? I am going to cast a uh, word on... Uh, uh, the... Yes. Source. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll the d4. Uh, two d4 plus four. Yep. Eight points. So you heal up eight points there, Soros. Is that your bonus action? Um, uh, yeah, because I can't. Uh, I can't do more than two spells at once, right? Not uh, you. Yeah. Uh, well, you can do. One can be a cantrip. So you can do a bonus action spell and then a cantrip as your action. Okay, you go ahead and cast Shalele, and it uh, gets your weapon ready for uh, and empowers your weapon um, for the next round. Or, yep. Okay, go ahead. All right, good. Um, all right, Roland is still laying in trash. Um, <laughs> at that moment, um, Abel, um, go ahead and uh, what's your passive perception, Abel? The passive perception is a... A 12. A 12. Okay. So you are um, not aware, <laughs> and but then suddenly you feel this like slicing p- pain in your back as a, a rapier slashes across your back and you take seven points of piercing damage plus... Can I, can I take a reaction or no? Uh, yeah. Can I try to cast shield as a reaction? Uh, ooh. Let's see. For shield, do you have to be aware of the attack? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be aware of the attack to use shield. It's cool. I didn't want to waste my spell slot That's okay. Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so plus you take uh, an, an additional six points of sneak attack from uh, the attack from Soren. Um, points. Oh. Yeah. And, um, and then you are also wounded uh, by the, the rapier attack. And then um, Soren's going to take attack of opportunity. Yeah, you get an attack of opportunity uh, there um, with your quarterstaff. Okay, so I swing at him with my quarterstaff, like 
Let me freaking hurt, man. Uh, a 15 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and roll um, damage. And I'll swing at the guy. Uh, seven points of seven points of damage. All right, so you smack Soren across the back uh, as he goes, and he stumbles for a moment, but he charges forward. And right as he's doing that thing that he's done the entire fight, where he's pulling shadows out of the air to disappear, you see him um, spin, and a, a cloud of daggers appear around him. And as he vanishes, the daggers shoot out in all directions. And I need um, Kaimana and Mar and the creature to roll dexterity saving throws it fails <laughs> that is some heavy dice whoever just threw that dice yeah <laughs> me <laughs> well, just a little plastic one that was a four four okay so you take four points of piercing damage kaimana as the as some of these daggers kind of contact with your body and then vanish and then mar uh 14 14 you also take four points of piercing damage from this Hi. this swarm of daggers and uh soren once again is gone has anyone hit him yes like, uh, he ha he has taken damage but he's um uh, he got nine points of damage to the balls yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not forget <laughs> and let me roll a d10 with him really quick no. Okay, good. Um, all right, which takes us to the guards who are going, the only thing they can really hit is the shadow creature. They're going to make three attacks against the shadow creature. Natural 20. Um, yeah. Also hits. And on, all three hit. So that's four, five, six, seven, and then six on the natural 20. So that's um, 19 points of damage. Uh, and it's out. You see. Poof, doof, doof, doof. Um, and so it disappears from the, the field. And so now, as you guys are looking out, uh, the only thing there is Gerard, uh, the, the dwarf. And so he's going to turn in your direction, um, Soros. And you see him, he drinks from his uh, flask again, and that energy swells through his body. And you see it coalesce around him, and he's going to um, cast Shocking Grasp. Mm -hmm. Let me just... Everybody up, ready reactions to hit. Hold your action to hit Soren whenever he yeah. pops in. Um, all right, so it is a melee attack roll, uh, which is a 16 to hit. Yep. Um, and you take 1d8. It's only five points of lightning damage, but you cannot take reactions until the start of your next turn. Okay. So you are there, um, and he isn't going to move because he's... He, he's he is emboldened by the drink and doesn't realize the danger that he's in. Um, all right, which takes us to you, Soros. Go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw. Did I get a turn? Oh, sorry, Did Mar. I, 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 I had deleted one of the things from my tab. Yeah, that's it's you, okay. Mar. Go ahead. No, I just knew. I was like, all right, I'm literally the last in this combat order, and that is after the dwarves. Um, okay. Um, I want to move away from Kaimata just so Soren can't come and, like, Get us both. Yeah, right there. Um, and I will hold him out. Uh, I know I gotta hold it, but I don't want to hold a melee. Uh, I want to hold melee, but I don't know if it'll come. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm gonna try something. Okay. I'm gonna hold my. I'm gonna hold an attack with my rape here. Okay. And I'm going to. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to yell out and say you can't even be fucking bothered to fight us yourself you little bitch <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait. all right uh go ahead and just roll a, a intimidation check with that all right, all right, yeah. all right. <laughs> that is known as a taunt yes <laughs> Uh, 15. 15, okay. Uh, we'll I take would like that everyone in. to know I have a minus one to it. Yeah, so that's I pretty just have been rolling really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good. Now, Soros, uh, go ahead and roll your constitution saving throw. Nope. Uh, okay, so you take uh, just a, another one point of damage from the wound. Um, and uh, But you now have your turn against the, uh, the wizard here. Great. I yell out. Still bleeding, come on. <laughs> uh, that's a 25. Okay, absolutely hits. Go ahead and roll um, your damage. 
That is six. Six points. That. Uh, how do you take out um, him? Man, you kept rolling. I kept like, oh, he's going to shield, shield. But you kept rolling right out of his range of his shield being beneficial. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I'm rolling good attack rolls, but I keep rolling crap on the saving throw for my constitution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, He's too drunk to your shield. He gives me a like, oh, yeah. I don't know. So how do you take <laughs> out this <laughs> the mage? I, I take his flask out of his hand with one hand and then punch him in the nose with another. Uh, yeah, and it's a it's a very large jug more than a flask, but you... I've, but now Actually, you, in that case, I punch through the jug um it's really interesting like you think oh it's just this glass jug once you hit it um you would think you'd punch right through it it does not remotely shatter it absolutely takes the hit but you push it into his face uh which knocks him out and the jug the jug crashes to the ground does not break or shatter Ooh, magic okay um yeah. all right uh can since my bonus action I can do a bonus unarmed attack if the attack action is I'll let you hold it if you want to. I'm going to hold it for Soren. Okay, so just in case Soren appears in your direction. All right, good. Just in case he appears near me, I'm going to hit him. All right, good, Um, which takes us to Abel. There's there's no visible threat that you can see. Don't I have to roll a constitution check? Oh, yeah, you do, yeah. Go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw. Oh, saving throw. Yeah. It has a dot next to it. It means I have proficiency, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, let me see. 18 plus 4. You're, mm-hmm. you're good. You shrug off the wound. You see it close in front of you. Um, so oh. you're all good. Did not know I have that ability. Okay, I'm going to repeat. Can I hold a bonus action attack? But I I'll, I'll let you, yeah. Because I, I, I rule that you get the full attack. So if you have a, a attack or a bonus attack, that's fine. So. Okay, I'll just hold my attack until... Are you holding the Force Ballista? Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, you're holding your Force Ballista for Soren's appearance. All right, good. Kaimana. Okay, and then you can still hold your attack, uh, if your melee attack as well. So go ahead and uh, roll your d4 plus 4. That's a 7. 7 points of damage there. Um, healed up source. Nice. I will take it. All right, and that takes us to... Um, good. Mar, uh, go ahead and roll advantage on your perception. Uh, all right, so for you're kind of there and you're waiting, you just shout it out into the air, and suddenly you you feel from behind you this uh, something clash against you uh, with a 17 to hit, um, and so his rapier slashes across you. He rolled a 19 on his stealth. Uh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, uh, but you only take four points from the rapier, uh, but you take um, seven points of sneak attack damage, and you are wounded from the attack. Oh, no, no, no. I'm down from the attack. Oh, you're down. All right, so Mar, you guys watch as Soren appears in that shadow, and he strikes no. out, and you see Mar just collapse to the ground. And I mean, he... I quite literally asked for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, he's about to uh, say something really smart, but uh, go ahead and uh, re- unleash your attack against him to see if you hit uh, Abel. Oh, oh, me. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me let me find it again. I tend to click around. I just time. wanted to stay up to hit him. That's all I wanted. <laughs> no. I just wanted to live through that attack. Oh, uh, it was no. yeah. If you'd if you'd <laughs> if you'd survived the, the the stealth check, you would have been able to get the know, hit off. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But I rolled terribly for my. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, fourteen plus five and nineteen. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. You yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. He does not have a lot of AC, but he. 11 damage 11 points of damage all right so uh he's about to like kind of sneer over you and say some smart alecky thing in your your direction mar but then like 
this blast hits him from the back and he stumbles forward a little bit and then he kind of looks in your direction um abel and he's like that's fine i will take you next and he's gonna toss um a dagger in your direction abel um that is a 12 to hit that won't hit no all right cool um and then he is going to he blinks out again this mother He's he when you la- the last you saw him he was looking pretty hurt from all of the damage that he'd been taking, but he obviously is there. Um, the guards can't do anything. Uh, the m- monk is down. Mar, go ahead and roll a death saving throw. Didn't Kaimana get to go? Kaimana, uh, he prepared his attack. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nine. A nine. Okay, so that's one failed save, Mar. Um, all right. That's Which, okay. Um, uh, Kamana has a healing potion. He'll pour it in you. You'll be back up. It's fine. <laughs> all right. I got uh, a cure wound. I got a yeah. cure wound. So Takes us to right. Saurus. Go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw. I... Come on. That one! <laughs> all right. So you that's take... A, that's a two. Uh, you take two points of, wound, of damage from the wound. Um, but now, you, what do you want to do with your turn there, uh, Saurus? Uh, I am going to move... Uh, 35 feet back into the, the square. Okay. Um, basically between Kamana and, and, and uh, yeah, right in there. All right. Uh, and I am going to ready my pistol. Okay. For a shot. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you uh, load your pistol and you're waiting for Soren's return. Uh, good. Abel. Um... Good shot. I'm going to traipse over towards Mar. Okay. And I'm going to catch. Yeah. Uh, cure wounds on her with my little mechanical spider. Okay, go ahead and roll your D8. Hold on. When you say that it is like... never not going to be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cute little mechanical He was so proud of that spider, no, and y'all are terrified of it. <laughs> He's a mechanical spider, and he cannot uh, be cured. <laughs> um, it's 8 plus 3, 11 points. 11 points of damage, Mars. So you're, you, you are... You are still prone, but you are, you, uh, and you come back awake and the, you see this spider crawling over your face for a second, <laughs> which Mar loves. He is friendly. He is friendly. All right. And I'm then. Still weird, man. Are you, and then you, uh, your bonus action, are you going to hold that there, Abel? Yeah, I guess I'll hold my force ballista. Okay. Um, good. Kaimana. I am going to Should I have just skip that spell slot? You woke Mar up, that's good. Hey, I, I thank you, and I appreciate you using that spell <laughs> slot. I mean if um, Kamado's gonna go right after me. Okay, good. All right, you're there. Um, and then uh, go ahead and while you're doing that, kind of want to roll a perception check. Oh, he coming. He coming. Oh, Lord, he coming. <laughs> That's a 25. Okay, um, so <laughs> for a moment, um, you guys are just kind of sitting there waiting and the wind's blowing and the, the rain starts to come down. And then, Kaimana, ever perceptive, you hear behind you the... Of the of Soren appearing, and he's going to take an attack against you. He will not get sneak attack. Go ahead and roll your d20 to see if he hits the um, your one of your doubles. That's a six. A six. Okay, so he slashes out and he makes contact, and like your double like hams it up and like oh. oh and then vanishes from existence and you actually have three so you still have two left um and then he kind of curses and he's going to run from you this direction um so you get an attack of opportunity with your staff yeah again you went out josh oh he gets an attack of you get an attack of opportunity come on up 
you hear? Did you hear Rob? Oh, I didn't. Uh, get my shot at him too. Oh right, yeah. Go ahead and roll your attack too, Rob. That's a Dirty. nineteen to hit shot. Nineteen. Go ahead and roll your damage. Y'all kill this motherfucker without me in this round. I'm gonna be angry, if, so we all know. If you beat <laughs> if, if you beat a fifteen, Soros, go ahead and roll your damage as well. Uh, I rolled an eighteen to hit. Good. All right. Uh, and so that is a nine plus four, so that's thirteen. Thirteen, nice. Thirty. And I do eight damage. Uh, oh, sweet, good. Uh, eight. That's forty-two. All right, so um, he's. Did, didn't Abel? No, Abel used his action to heal. Yeah. Mar. Never mind. Oh yeah, I had a force for this to hold. Oh, that's right. You held your yeah, bonus. Force to hold. Um, so go ahead and fire that off too. You guys are just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, he's looking hurt. But, I mean, he has been popping out of things, so. I'll say I'll say to Ma, do not worry, we will take care of him. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> I knew it would piss her off, that's what I said. Did you? Oh, it's not. It's a, it's a 10 to hit. No, hit. that doesn't hit. All right, so uh, he takes. I aggressively scream at you so much. <laughs> the sh. The sh. The sh <laughs> so. Um, whack across the back with the staff, shot in the side with the pistol, smoke going everywhere. This anger starts seething in Soren's eyes, and you see him kind of like toss up his hand and grab a, a, a shadow and rip it. And then he takes another one and rips it. And they're starting to wrap around his body. And um, you see him start to kind of whirl all these together. And the portal that normally opens up around him uh, to suck him in starts to go, expands. And all of you, Kaimana, you don't see what's going on. All of you disappear and reappear in um, an exact copy of this realm or this world but everything is shadow and darkness where there's normally light and Soren is there now uh, at the center of you all and he kind of just kind of looks in your direction and he says huh, I've got you all where I want you now and he spins again in a, a, a rare a, a blast of daggers shoot out from all directions I need all three of you to roll uh, dexterity saving throws uh, am I still prone um, yeah you are but um, okay. you so you have disadvantage on the dex or do you, yeah yeah yeah. Glass. I got a seven. One and eighteen. Okay, you take half damage. Jesus, what is half damage? Source. Seventeen. Seventeen. You take half 18. damage. Source. Okay, you all take half damage. You take. Uh, Three, uh, two points of piercing damage uh, from this cloud of daggers. Um, and then Soren is there. Um, and you see like those shadows that have been raging around him. They start to like oh, yes. expand outwards. And it's almost like these are like tethers that are snaking out behind him. And they're like going out behind into an alleyway. They're going out further. It's almost like they're going off in search of something um, while you're here. <clears throat> Um, so that takes us to Mar. Okay. I get up. Okay, so you pop up. So you're in the shadow realm. You got half your movement left. I get up. I, uh, spit blood. Mm -hmm. And I want to do blood curses and marks on Sorim. All right. Um, so my eyes go red and his eyes go red. I'm gonna go attack him with my rapier. All right. Um, and I'm not gonna amplify it because my HP is really low. Yeah. But, uh, oh, come on. What is that? Uh, 17? 17. That hits. Okay, okay, okay. So that is. Kill him. Wait, we might be. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So that's 8. That's 5. 13. 13, okay. And then I'm rolling him across twice, which is... Jesus, okay. So that's three, that's four. What number did I just say before? Uh, ten. Three plus four. Th three plus four. So that's an additional, an additional seven points? An additional seven of the lightning damage, because I used the mark to right. double the lightning on him. Um, so how do you want to do this? Yes! Ah, <laughs> that's what I wanted! Um, okay, I... <laughs> um, I just want to grab him on the shoulder um, and just slam the rapier through him and go, 
Try teleporting out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, blood shoots out of his mouth, and he slumps against you and drops his rapier to, the, to his side um, and collapses at your feet, Mar. Uh, now, I take his rapier. Okay, you, you pick up his rapier. Um, now, all of the, the shadows that had tethered to him lift off of him and start screeching away from you guys off down in all the directions and you start to hear maybe six it's hard to tell distance and and time and anything else in this space with the darkness and everything Um, you start to hear that sound of those kind of shadowy creatures off in the distance Um, Mm -hmm. but you guys are here now kaimana you're like back in the square your friends are gone <laughs> um, like, uh, like who knows what's going on there uh, but so what do you guys we're technically out of combat but there is a fear that something could be coming your um, direction is soon does, is he wearing a brooch rings the cape uh, go, yeah. go ahead and roll an investigation check very quickly can I give him advantage if I help uh, yeah go ahead with advantage I'm helping 18 18. So you go, the only thing that he's wearing is the, uh, his armor, um, but it just appears to be kind of fancy leather armor, nothing kind of magical or anything about it. Um, it's so hot in this house, the AC doesn't work, that's great. Uh, but, but there's, there's nothing, there's nothing that you guys can see, like a ring or anything like that. Uh, you do find a pouch that's filled with, uh, money. Take the pouch. Well, I take that. All right, so you take the pouch. <laughs> and you're all just kind of standing there around him. What are you doing? Uh, can I do a perception uh, check to see if anything's like cut? Like, is there anything else around us? Does there seem to be anything coming for us in this space? Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. Rapier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, t- I took. As soon as I killed him, I took. No, 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 no. Try the rapier. Oh, like swing the rapier, like cool. <laughs> Sorry. If anything happens. What was your investigation check total um, again, Soren? A source. Eighteen. Eighteen. You also find in his uh, pocket uh, a small, uh, like a compact uh, mirror uh, with a ruby inlay in the back. The mirror face, though, um, the moment you grab it, the mirror face shatters. Uh, but you do have that. Um, in a, with an eighteen in the other, in another pocket, you pull out a small chess piece, uh, and it is a pawn chess piece made of witchwood. Uh, and you find two healing potions. Okay, I'm, I'm an I'm a. Uh, Mar, what, were, I, what was your uh, perception check, Mar? How much gold? Yeah. Oh, I didn't roll it. Uh, it's a it's a hefty sack. It's five platinum, forty two gold, fifteen silver. Yeah. Just remember my perception. Um, twenty one. Twenty one. Uh, the sounds are getting closer. This space is an exact copy of the town square in every way, uh, except it's this shadowy space, but you can hear in the distance like those creeping sounds of those shadow creatures getting closer. Okay, um, I think we should get from out in, in open and run inside of one of these buildings. Does the rapier do anything if I kind of mess with it? See if it gets me out of this? It's a very okay. nice rapier. Um, you swing it around, nothing happens. Okay, well, useful. <laughs> All right, so you guys start moving. Um, yeah, we should go like inside the inn or something, right? Okay. Guys? What's your movement speed, uh, Abel? 30. And 45, Rob, uh, Soros, and 30? Yeah. Okay, so you all start taking off towards a building, and you you know, are tearing across the town, the, the town square, and you get, uh, you're stepping, 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 and then for a moment you're all running together and then suddenly uh abel disappears and mark disappears and saurus you're alone um you've got you got you've gone about uh you've gone about 30 feet and then suddenly your two friends disappear from the realm and you're alone in this space and you see uh, around one of the alleyways one of those shadow creatures moving in your direction and you can hear now there's some in the air that are diving down in your direction as well. Do you keep moving? Right. Yeah, but I'm going to swerve away from the alleyway where the one's coming at me. Okay, so you turn and you take 5 feet, 10 feet, and then the moment you hit that 15 feet mark, 
you vanish and then you guys all appear back and um you had moved closer to a, an opposite alleyway you appear in that exact spot in the the, the material world so you'd moved a distance mm -hmm. and then you appeared there and then you all are all there kaimana you see your three friends reappear back into the prime material plane oh, come on all right uh, um, yeah and um it is ten sixteen, but I, if you guys want to wrap up this really quick, um, that would be a good place to, to, to kind of wrap up things. Where did yep. you guys yeah. go? Okay. Uh, it was a yeah. It's a duplicate of this one. Uh, so is he uh, gone? I'm gonna go back and search the other bodies, see what's going on with them. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check on whichever body you're searching. Uh, who, the wizard guy. Okay, yes. roll an investigation check on the wizard, and if anybody's searching the barbarian, they can roll an investigation on the barbarian. I'll too. search the barbarian. Alright, go ahead and roll Why an not? investigation on the barbarian. I got an 18 plus 5, a 23. 18 plus 5, okay, so on the wizard, um, you discover the did you take the jug source or did you leave it behind after it fell? I, I left it behind. Okay, so you find this uh, large jug um that fell from the air landed on a couple rocks did not shatter or break um you find on his head there's a very beautiful looking kind of headband with a, a jewel in the center um you immediately recognize you pull a gem out of a pocket and you're like this might be valuable as a nuavian you immediately recognize it. it is a zephyrite crystal um of course um you also discover a sack of coins with eight gold 15 silver and 10 copper and three uh, other gems that you think are worth somewhere between 10 or 15 gold each. Three gems, 10 to 15 gold. Right. Mm. Uh, Mar on the barbarian, what was your investigation? 16. 16. Uh, coins, she doesn't have very many. She has two gold. Great. <laughs> Um, however, you are looking at her, the only, aside from her, like really yeah. like dancing outfit, the only mm -hmm. thing that she has are a pair of bracers that are beautifully inlaid and carved. And you're looking at it and you're like, those are, those are runes. Um, and so she's wearing these bracers that have runic embolisms on it. Uh, and you pull those off and you have access to those. Yeah. Um, so right, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to save to save everybody's um, time, I think like picking up at our next session with the post of this would be great. I will say that we assume that Abel will identify all of the items that are present. So just to and I forgot, Kamana didn't use his uh, magic staff this turn, so I, I was waiting for that to show up. <laughs> but oh yeah, <laughs> um, so. Uh, and I'll send you all the, d depending on who wants these items, I'll send you each which item you, you got. But Mar, the rapier, is a rapier of wounding. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sully's super excited about that. Oh, Me too, to Sully. Me too, girl. Um, I want the bracers. Yeah. The, the, you're, you're getting the bracers. The, the mirror has a magical essence, but since it's broken, you couldn't get a sense of what it does other than I can mend it. Uh, you try to mend it and it doesn't work. Oh, never mind. Uh, I still give it to Abel mm -hmm. um, because he may be able, he's most likely to be able to figure out how to get it working. Mm -hmm. He's also, he and Kamana are the only magic oriented people we have. So the person most likely to be able to use it is, is him anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, you have the broken compact. There you go. Um, that the the it is it's a silver mirror compact. Uh, there's a ruby on the back. It had a magical essence. You can't. It's it's broken so much you can't even get a read on the school. Uh, if you spent time studying it beyond identify, you might be able to think about it or maybe get some help figuring out what this might have been used for. Um, other, and other than the the pawn chess piece, nothing else. There there wasn't it wasn't magical at all. Um, the bracers uh, are bracers of the dancer. You get the sense that Sumali was a dancer. Um, it gives plus one bonus to initiative and a plus one bonus to AC as long as you're not wearing any armor or carrying a shield. Oh, yeah, that's definitely 
sword. Um, the jug is an alchemy jug. Ooh. And the headband was a headband of intellect, which gives 19 intellect to the wearer. What? Give it to Kamana. Give it to Kamana. <laughs> I like that jug. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you the drug and I'll take the head. All right. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, that yeah. makes sense. Good. But consider. <laughs> I'll send you all the stat blocks and everything, and we'll we'll pick up with the aftermath here, knowing that um, you might not have fully saved Broadfield, but you've in, in finished the in, initial danger. Uh, and with that, Adventurer's Guild hits uh, level four. What? <laughs> Exciting. All right. Any Thanks. any questions or anything? I know we've ran over, so I don't want to keep you all too late. But if you have any anything you want to ask or, or get out of the way, uh, I'm gonna give one of the healing potions to uh, Mar. I'm gonna need one yeah. nine HP. If if anybody wants to heal me, I'm I, bloody. I'm, we'll be able to heal up from yeah. sleeping. I'm also at a tender to... nine <laughs> HP. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you guys for an uh, exciting battle uh, with, yeah. I like. Josh was so excited about this battle. Look how sweaty he got. Thanks. It's, it's, <laughs> it's also, it's also 87 degrees in the house right now. So that, that doesn't help oh, as no. well. Yeah. And, and, and let's have a round of applause for the appearance of Kamana. Yay, yeah. Kamana. <laughs> Right. Well that well is that is amazing. Yes, that's so <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all next time. <laughs> all right. Thank Have you. a good yeah. one, guys.